while at the same time be aware of the past. We owe it to him, therefore, to carry on his vision. And while he is not here, he will always continue to inspire us. I now call the I now call the Rector of the Cyprus University of Technology, Professor Panagiotis Zafiris, for the opening speech. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it is my great pleasure to welcome you all to this final conference and dissemination event for the project building the capacity of educators and librarians in information and literacy. This project has been a collaboration effort between multiple organizations and individuals aimed at improving the skills and knowledge of educators and librarians in the crucial area of information and literacy. And I was just looking at the leaflet, noting that uh, actually we had very close collaboration with all the partners that are there, including the universities from abroad in the past with a number of projects. As we all know, information literacy is an essential component of education and lifelong learning in the 21st century. In an era of fake news, misinformation, information overload, it is more important than ever that our students, colleagues, and information specialists have the skills to critically evaluate information, navigate the vast and complex information landscape, and effectively communicate their own ideas. Over the past few years, I have noticed that you have worked hard to develop and implement a range, a range of strategies and resources to enhance the information literacy capacity of specific target groups. You have created training programs, developed online resources and tools, organized workshops and webinars, and established networks of professional professionals and experts in the field. However, there is, of course, a lot of work still to be done in this area of information literacy. I'm sure opportunities will arise for further collaborations in this specific area between the members of the networks you have created. I would like to take this opportunity to express my sincere thanks and appreciation to all those who are, that have contributed to this project including our funding agencies, the partners of this project, of course, uh, the Cyprus University of Te Technology staff, and especially my colleague, Marius Zervas, who is leading the library of our university. Your dedication, expertise, and hard work have been instrumental in the success of this project. And I'm deeply grateful for your contributions. I hope this collaboration and conference and the dissemination event will provide a platform for sharing ideas, experiences, and best practices, and for building new partnerships and collaborations. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a nice day. Thank you. Mrs. Christiana Stavru, Educational Planning Officer of the Cyprus Pedagogical Institute, will address the greeting on behalf of the Acting Director, Dr. Elena Hajikagu. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Rector of the Cyprus University of Technology, Mr. Library Director, of the Cyprus University of Technology, distinguished speakers, dear distinguished guests, dear educators, good morning to all. It is with great pleasure that I am addressing today the conference Building the Capacity of Educators and Librarians in Information Literacy, which takes place within the framework of the European Erasmus Plus Program Educability and is co-organized by the Library of the Cyprus University of Technology and the Cyprus Pedagogical Institute. The main aim of the conference is to present the results of the Educability Project, which were the development and distribution of information literacy courses in six different themes through the Moodle platform. Critical information literacy, digital literacy, mobile literacy, media and information literacy, data literacy, and sustainable development literacy. The importance of information literacy is highlighted by Ute Kraus Leichert, arguing that Alongside classical education, the so-called information literacy 
is becoming increasingly important in the modern world. The main reason is the development of a plethora of information sources due to the rapid and continuous technological changes resulting to changes in the field of information in all its formats. It is therefore important for everyone to develop information literacy skills as an important part of lifelong learning, which empowers people in searching, evaluating, and using information properly, most notably in situations requiring decision-making, problem-solving, or the acquisition of knowledge. Within this context, libraries place play a pivotal role in implementing lifelong learning infrastructures as they are the starting point of learning the methods needed for accessing information efficiently, evaluating information and its sources critically, and using information effectively. In addition, libraries contribute to the development of the necessary capacities to use internet and other electronic resources of information. Hence, information literacy pertains to the entire educational community since it is linked with the educational role of libraries and the collaboration of both librarians and educators for undertaking initiatives in educational field, restructuring the educational process and developing a new learning environment. On this basis, Cyprus Pedagogical Institute, as the official carrier for the educators in service training and fulfilling its mission for the continuous professional development of educators of all levels, participates and applauds the organization of this conference. In addition, Cyprus Pedagogical Institute hopes that will provide a breeding ground for exchanging views, experiences, and practices, which educators will communicate to their students in order to make them information literate and capable of effectively confronting the challenges of the 21st century. Concluding, I would like to welcome the distinguished speakers from Cyprus and abroad who have worked zealously for the success of the conference. And I would like to thank the educators for their time and interest in attending the conference. Also, many thanks to the Cyprus University of Technology and especially the library of the Cyprus of the University of Technology for the organization of the conference, as well as for the long-standing cooperation. I wish all of you a fruitful and productive time during the conference. <laughs> Dr. Elena Hachikagu, Acting Director of Cyprus Pedagogical Institute. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Mr. Mario Zervas, the Library Director of the Cyprus University of Technology. Good morning, everyone. Dear Rector, Professor Panagiotis Zafiris, dear uh, Director of Administration and Finance, Kostas Kopas, dear keynote speakers, Mrs. Irini Andriopoulou, and Professor Francisco Javier Garcia uh, Marco, dear colleagues, dear sponsors, and friends, I would like to welcome you all to the final conference of the Erasmus Plus project, Educability, Building the Capacity of Educators and Librarians in Information Literacy. It was both a challenging and demanding project. Therefore, I would like to express sincerely gratitude to my colleagues, especially Mirula Grotiriadu, who was the project manager for the entire project, and to the Subject Librarians team Erasmia, Athena, Fotini, and Maria for their hard work and tremendous effort to meet the demands of the project in addition to their daily work. Educability project is oriented towards professionals, lame, namely educators in all types and levels of education, formal, informal, primary, secondary, ter tertiary, vocational education and training, distance learning, Etc., and librarians in all kinds of libraries, school, public, academic, special libraries who are interested in their continuous professional development in the field of information literacy. The project proposes innovative technologies, approaches, and digital technologies for teaching and learning. The final outcome the good educability platform is a virtual learning environment called VLE, who hosts seven online open access interactive self-paced courses. Educators and librarians are 
placed in the heart of promoting the above literacies to today's information and knowledge society. The competence that they acquire will enable them to embed and apply information literacy in various educational environments and in real life settings regarding work, social and environmental activity, citizenship, mass media and personal life goals. Especially librarians will develop new information and literacy skills to meaningfully support educators, youth and the community they serve. Our library has believed and invested in information literacy from the first years of its existence. It has done this by setting up the office of subject librarians, creating subject guides by using professional tools such as LibGuides, introducing an information literacy course in the curriculum of an academic department with the objective of adding in to the rest of the departments, co cooperate with the academic members of our university to hold seminars during the academic year, supporting students in the successful achievement of their thesis project with personal appointments. The completion of the educa educability project gives an added value to the local and international community and is part of the library's effort to contribute to the development of information literacy skills of students and all levels of education, primary, secondary, and higher education. In 2018, our university, by initiative of the library, signed an agreement with the Ministry of Education of Cyprus for the creation of the Union Catalog of School Libraries. The Union Catalog is the first step towards upgrading school libraries. This, this project is in progress and we are doing our best to ensure its delivery as soon as possible. Our concern now is to convince the Cyprus Ministry of Education to establish the posi position of teacher librarian in the schools. The sustainability of the content created during the educability project is a very important goal, as well as a continued challenge for us and our partner. It is imperative that we ensure the spreading through the information literacy network worldwide, especially for us at the Cyprus University of Technology, the knowledge and the skills obtained we have a positive impact on the quality of the students' learning and help the ongoing library collaboration with the Language Center and the university's learning network. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. We are now opening the conference and I hope all of you watching enjoy the conference. It is with great pleasure to, and honor to introduce our first keynote speaker, a media literacy expert, researcher, policy analyst, and practitioner, Mrs. Irini Andriopoulou. Mrs. Andriopoulou holds a BA on communication and mass media from Athens University, a Master of Arts in Media Studies, Sussex University, and she is a PhD candidate at Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, Faculty of Journalism and Media Studies on MIL policies. She was a member of the European Commission Expert Group on tackling disinformation and promoting digital literacy through education and training between 2021 and 2022, and former member of the EC Media Literacy Expert Group between 2006 and 2018. Mrs. Andrea Bulu has been elected as the Global Co-Secretary General of the International Steering Committee for UNESCO Media and Information Literacy Alliance, and a member of Making Sense of Media Research Working Group by Ofcom UK. From 2018 to 2023, uh, was the head of research studies and education department at ECOM, ECOM, the National Center of Audiovisual Media and Communication in Greece, coordinating the EU subchapter Mediterranean group of UNESCO MIL Alliance. Her present position is at the Secretariat General for Communication and Media, Directorate for Media, 
Department of Audiovisual Media and the Internet, Presidency of the Government. In addition, an author of a series of policy papers, articles, and journal publications. Through focusing the evidence-based research combined with practice and synergies with public service and school platforms and advocating through extensive public speaking and writing, her upper goal is to achieve lifelong learning, media literacy, competence for all. Today, Mrs. Andrea Bulu will talk about channeling information, smog through upskilling with media and information literacy skills. Ms. Andrea Bulu, the floor is yours. Good, good morning. Okay, you can hear me. Uh, good morning. I'm very glad to be with you today. This is a very nice sunny morning in Cyprus. And I'm really honored to be uh, to this uh, conference uh, presenting the educability project, uh, which uh, at some point I also um, um, was part of the testing experience. So uh, this is uh, a very important project uh, with uh, a global uh, impact eventually. Uh, the, the, the title of my presentation is uh, Channeling Information Smoke Through Upskilling uh, with Media and Information Literacy Skills. Okay, so uh, in a recent speech I gave last week at the United Nations side event uh, held held by Eureka and the Korean stakeholders, um, I was invited to talk about digital well-being and how in, it intersects with media and information literacy. So this got me into thinking, what exactly do we mean with digital well-being? Are we referring to the hegemony of navigating online, playing, finding friends, communicating, accessing information and diverse content um, through multiple universes? Or are we engaging into a protectionist approach where users learn how to avoid harmful and potential risky content online related to disinformation and malpractice. As it was said in a recent exhibition in Athens, Greece called Plasmata, are these hybrid worlds that everybody is navigating today here, are these hybrid worlds are here to change the physical reality as we know it, or are these instances of short-lived pleasure and gratification? Well, in my opinion, it is both, with engaging a more proactive perspective where the special focus should be on the abundance of media choices and resources online and the creative outputs we are challenged to do with them. Um, media and information literacy, according to UNESCO, uh, is the new alphabet of reading and writing uh, with the media, through the media, in an information interface. Young people today, as prosumers, they use new technologies to communicate, to consume, to learn, to interact, create content, share media experiences. And the librarians and archivists and all information professionals have a major uh, role into managing this plethora of information. Um, uh, this is about the information uh, disorder. So, whereas millennials were considered as digital pioneers uh, who bore witness to the explosion of technology uh, and social media some time ago, today's generation is the Gen Z generation that is born into a world of peak technological innovation where information is immediately accessible, capped with social media dominance. Let me just fix. Um... No, I, I need to, to go back.
Okay. Um, so um, today's youth generation, they are the so-called digital natives, as Prensky noted some time ago. They are the native language speakers uh, of uh, this new generation, whereas parents and adults, we are all the immigrants in this new era of media. I would actually also suggest that they are the, they are screen born without their consent, though, uh, since they are in front of a screen from the very first mini they are born. Uh, and Alice, we have all seen pictures and photographs and videos taken of them from their early days uh, uh, in life, even at the hospital. Additionally, all kids are now content creators uh, and, and we adults have to come to terms with this reality to consider. We have to consider their new behavioral patterns, their habits, their preferences, their own experience in the new social media universe. And this goes with the main realization that every platform has its its own meaning, its own operational code that every user should be familiarized, aware of, following the old but always relevant saying by McLuhan, the medium is the message. Now, every, everyone today uh, has his own volcano of opinions um, that is erupted depending on the news agenda each time, mainly through social media platforms and especially during times of crisis. Uh, we all remember what happened during the pandemic and the current infodemia that followed it. David Seng, in, a very, in the very early uh, media days uh, back in 1997, talked about uh, the data smog the information smog. Uh, and then he suggested that a new critical thinking citizen should emerge that should be able to dive into this information fog and learn how to swim and recognize challenges and opportunities and also learn how to protect himself from the digital era new risks. Today, this information smog has turned into an information chaos, we would say, with pathogenic phenomena being present in the digital world and virtual realities and disinformation and fake news uh, uh, being at the forefront. This overflow of information can be equally risky with a complete lack of it for the human brain, keeping us away for, uh, from making the right decisions. Mm -hmm. It can lead to pseudo-educated citizens uh, as human brain is more or less like the PC uh, brain, the PC data, that is when it is overloaded, we need some time to be able to tell important from non-important uh, information. So this is the way the PC brain uh, uh, works. It is related to uh, the human brain. This information is not something new, of course, but it is present in every medium today due to the democratic nature of the new media that give us access directly or uh, indirectly, we all have access as users. It is even more uh, risky today because it's not easy to spot and it is often mixed with a genuine newsfeed. Can we move to the next slide? So what shall we do about it? Let me start with defining the, the three main notions of uh, information disorder that they are all, uh, they have crossing paths. So we talk about this information, which is uh, verifiable false or misleading information created, presented, disseminated, uh, uh, intentionally to uh, deceive the public and it can cause uh, public harm. Then we have misinformation, which is verifiable false information that is spread without the intention to mislead and often shared because the user believes that it is true. It is equally risky, of course. And then malinformation, which is created in order to use to, to, to cause harm. Um, some uh, educability, next slide, please. Educability is a great EU initiative that brings uh, media and information professionals and librarians and familiarize them with uh, the ability to critically access, manage, and share information in all contexts. It follows the EU mobility in the field of EU digital strategy. And let me summarize some of the uh, recent um, policymaking initiatives by the European uh, uh, bodies and the European Commission mainly. So in, in 2022, there was this new strengthened code of uh, practice on disinformation addressing all media stakeholders in the digital uh, media industry for a renewed commitment to counter online disinformation and ensure 
ensure digital well-being. We have 34 signatories this far that signed this code of uh, um, practice on this information from civil societies, from uh, education, from academics, from media stakeholders for a future-proof uh, regulatory policy to combat disinformation and safeguard the use of information and quality of media content. Uh, then we have the EDMO, which is the EU Digital Media Observatory, again with a joint mandate on combating disinformation through media and information literacy. Uh, the, the most recent hub is the Mediterranean uh, EDMO, and um, I think also Cyprus um, is uh, a part to this. Also, the Creative Europe funding project that uh, has a specific focus on projects that have to do with uh, disinformation and AI and media literacy. And the most recent one that is addressed to educators uh, are the EU guidelines on combating disinformation through digital literacy in lifelong learning and typical education at the same time. It is accompanied by a public policy uh, report, very interesting uh, to use. They're free to download. Um, they're available in uh, uh, many languages, in, uh, um, also in, uh, in Greek. And uh, it is a very useful tool uh, to use in the classroom to familiarize uh, with the main notions of uh, this information, uh, with a set of uh, uh, exercises of uh, good practices and very interesting resources uh, to use. And also back in 2021, media literacy and disinformation was the main uh, focus of uh, e-training the school uh, network, the European school network. Next slide, please. Uh, now, what is going on in the global uh, sphere? Um, the previous one. Ah, okay, the next one. So uh, UNESCO, uh, through its systematic efforts and global leadership in the field of media and information literacy, um, has placed this uh, field, this research field in the front row. Uh, first, as an academic school of thought somewhat 40 years ago, and now recently as a global movement bringing together media and information literacy professionals, policy makers, public and private entities for a global commitment for resilient and democratic societies. Through a multitude of actions and initiatives, the UNESCO Media and Information Literacy Alliance see media and information skill, uh, literacy skills as a prerequisite for the foundational human right of access to information and in freedom of expression, according to uh, Article 19 of Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Some recent regulatory developments in the field, we have uh, in 2020 the United Nations Revol uh, Resolution on encouraging national MIL policies, then the recent commitments uh, that took uh, place in the uh, during United Nations Transforming Education Agenda Summit in September uh, in New York, where media and information literacy skills were associated with digital skills. Then, in October 2022, during UNESCO Global MIL Week, the Abuja Declaration on Global Financing for MIL Skills was signed uh, by 65 countries this far. And it, it, it stipulates that media and information literacy should be a panakia. And I'm very impressed that they use this uh, Greek word, meaning a holistic remedy to something. So MIL should be a panakia to the global scourge of fake news, disinformation, and calls all media stakeholders and partners to commit and support funding on MIL. We keep the, the, the term funding because it is uh, uh, the first time that UNESCO talks about specific funding on MIL. So we're eager to hear more about it uh, soon in the, in the near future. So how exactly MIL is associated with this information as an inevitable precaution measure linked with critical skills or as a timely resource for responding to disinformation chaos? I would suggest both. In the media convergent era, following the various definitions by the European Commission, Council of Europe, by UNESCO, one cannot talk about media and information literacy without having secured first the access, uh, the management, the retrieval of content and media resources, either as passive or active uh, user. And um, this is of utmost importance for librarians, uh, since uh, here you are the managers and the facilitators of huge repositories and networks of information. Next slide, please. Uh, 
At the same time, media and information literacy is closely associated with digital skills. So according to the World Economic Forum, eight digital skills are mostly important for a full digital intelligence. We talk about digital uh, identity, uh, digital use, safety, security, emotional intelligence, very important, communication, li digital literacy, uh, digital rights, protection of copyrights. Uh, and according to ESCO, there are uh, overall 137 digital skills that um, involve technical and cognitive components. So digital skills are uplifted as uh, life skills, and this is where they meet with the necessary skills that need to be adopted by also the information uh, professionals. Um, so MIL skills are far more than the, uh, the technical uh, component, the technical access and use uh, of information. Uh, we should focus on the uh, digital emotional intelligence. So MIL is about being able to critically reflect on the content on the information waves through a dynamic subconscious mental process that we are being or should be practice and program from a very early stage of life. And we should learn how to treat content as a constructed set of meanings, obvious and Latin from the very first meaning we come across a message uh, on some platform. In that sense, we could argue that MIL is the tool against the invisible other, the risk or the third sp space, uh, as it is usually called. Seems easy. In fact, it is not. Because all users today, we have the personal beliefs, the ideologies, the prejudice, experience, personal experience that stand in between the constructing the message in its original form. Message perception is also influenced by the emotional status we are at the moment of receival, uh, as well as interacted with emotional appeal strategies uh, by the media makers. And plus, the truth has a very relative meaning uh, in our days. It's not one direction, but it's a multiple way direction. And we have more than one truth. And this is where it gets uh, uh, even complicated. Next slide, please. So how much is too much? I would like to focus on the wise content management. They say that content is the king and they are right. The medium on the other hand, through which content is being transmitted is a queen and also the message, but it's another story. So I would like to focus on the content creation as it consists the number one challenge today within digital media literacy and the new pathways for all users, minors, minors and adults. Um, uh, um, um, according to the MIL definition, the first round is about the technical competence, the ability to access the content, to know where to look for the content that you are interested in, to fit your information needs, uh, and be able to retrieve it and, 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 and treat it in an ethical way. And then the second strand has to do with the filtering, the critical analysis of the information, uh, the trustworthy information, and the third strand has to do with uh, uh, creating a media literate uh, audience, uh, uh, creating uh, user-generated content. Now, if we want to engage, especially youth, uh, with quality content, we have to create the need for it. As uh, once the Apple created Steve, Job, uh, Steve Jobs said, uh, before launching his new media uh, technological products, some people say give the customers what they want, but that's not my approach. Our job is to figure out what they're going to want before they do. Uh, he went on quoting Henry Ford, Henry Ford, uh, the, the, the car industry uh, billionaire, that if I had asked customers what they wanted, they would have asked for a faster horse. So you get the drill. People don't actually know what they need until you drive their needs and show it to them. This is the job not just of the high-tech big media companies, but also of the information providers from li libraries and archival settings in order to nurture a healthy relationship with the media and the content. Today, media users are pretty close to becoming semi-professional media users, 
um, because um, they, they deal with the media content, they create their own media content, they share it with a, a very uh, large audience. Uh, we have some examples from uh, photography, from citizen journalism, where social media platforms, especially Instagram, are full of content creators and photographers who are disseminators of information and media messages, consciously and unconsciously. On that note, we have to start cultivating media and information literacy skills from a very early stage of life, skills that aim towards the creation of a screen-wise user, a media autonomous user. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> so with regards to uh, uh, media and information literacy and traditional versus digital content, I would suggest that it falls under the same skill, the same paradigm, but in a new context. The main concept behind it is the same. It is the same, uh, but the, com the platform is the one that differs. Uh, it is a channel per se, the mediator and the communication process through which media are being transmitted that change. So we have to adapt, adapt to the new communication codes. Next slide, please. The main premise for a well-informed citizenry uh, remains how to meaningfully engage with media and digital content and tools towards reaching knowledge societies. The answer is through upskilling and reskilling traditional critical media skills in multiple intersecting fields. That being said, it is imperative to link MIL with digital uh, citizenship with specific focus on education in school and lifelong learning setting, on protection issues, respect, respect of the, con of the, co of the content, respect of our, the other users online, and civic engagement. Next slide, please. In times of crisis, we need a calibrated response. According to UNESCO, the desire to believe can outweigh the desire to be informed. And this is our main challenge here, to fight the ephemeral nature of news worldwide with this information being the main risk, and to understand that we live in consciousness societies that media play the most active role. So how can we create an enable, enabling learning environment that can accommodate those who think they don't have a problem uh, distinguish disinformation from accurate information without alienating them. In business terms, we say that we could use this uh, a SWOT social policy approach about focusing on the strengths, on the weaknesses, on the opportunities and the threats that may act as a general uh, precautionary uh, principle for wise content management and an informed citizenry. MIL falls into that remit. It is now clear that we are talking about a new media and information literacy intelligence paradigm with new notions and precautions for the metaverse. In this context, there is no doubt that artificial intelligence and AI-based algorithms, they play a dominant role and affect people on deciding what media content they will consume, which media platform they will use, and how they will treat it, how they will choose to share it. This is a complex metamedia reality nonetheless, but as media literacy author uh, David Buckingham once said, we need to address the politics of the now impossible, but soon to be possible. So let us all get down to it. Thank you very much for your time. We thank Mrs. Andrea Boulou for such an interesting speech. We are pleased to have you here today with us and we really appreciate the time you took for our conference. Uh, a small change to our schedule, Mrs. Andrea Boulou has to leave early. So we will have a so short session now where you can address your questions. Any questions? Yes. Thank you for coming and for having such. Can you hear me? Thank you for coming and for presenting such an interesting. Uh, presentation, a holistic, I could say, about uh, media information literacy. Um, how you, uh, because uh, you are a policymaker, 
Uh, how would you suggest that uh, uh, teachers and librarians, educators and librarians, uh, could uh, mm, uh, press some people, could uh, uh, like politicians or uh, uh, people leaders? Uh, how could they uh, promote this notion of information literacy and media information literacy and other literacies, data literacies, etc., in order to incorporate all these in the curricula of schools, uh, in uh, universities, etc.? Thank you. Thank you for being here. So, uh, first of all, I'm not a policymaker myself, <laughs> uh, but. Um, through the Secretariat General for Communication and Media, uh, we work in the European context of uh, policy making and raising uh, media literacy and information literacy uh, 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 high in the policy making agenda. Um, so this is a very uh, trouble, troubled and, and, and question that's been set to uh, the Greek Ministry of Education, the Greek policy makers, and I guess here in Cyprus the same, uh, many, many years ago. Um, it is, of course, a necessity to, to integrate media and information literacy in the school curriculum be because, as I said, uh, 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 students today, they are the digital natives, so they are in front of a screen all the time, so many uh, hours a day. So it is something that we should not neglect, but uh, engage uh, a creative aspect. We have to also to, to, to guide uh, students and, and educators towards the creative uh, uh, opportunities that lie within the media and the new digital media. And in parallel with the protectionist uh, agenda from harmful content. So um, there are many ways to do that. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we have to raise awareness on a, on a public uh, level uh, through uh, media and information literacy weeks, uh, through conferences, through uh, open events. Um, and this is uh, because um, you, you can find many initiatives and projects uh, in NGOs, in national authorities, uh, media organizations. So uh, we need synergies, uh, uh, synergies among these uh, uh, players. Uh, we need to, to have awareness raising events and take part also to, to global uh, initiatives such as uh, UNESCO Global Media and Information Literacy Week every year. Uh, and uh, uh, while the policymakers, they have secured the regulatory uh, umbrella, the regulatory policy that is an enable uh, framework, uh, then uh, we need to focus on uh, educating, on, on, on the training of uh, educators in order to be able to speak about these issues in the classroom. I mean, in Greece, we have the... Um, <clears throat> There was this uh, recent uh, um, uh, skills uh, labs 21 plus. There is this uh, new scheme in the school curriculum that uh, uh, educators can talk about digital literacy, media information literacy, data literacy, games literacy. So there is this uh, open space there. It's not uh, um, uh, embedded in the school curriculum, but it is uh, an optional uh, course that they all uh, can take uh, within a year. But they don't, they are lacking the resources. That's why educability is a very important tool because you have the resources, you can train uh, the educators, the information librarians, how to treat with uh, the content, how to find exams and projects, and then uh, uh, try them in the classroom. And the students, from my experience, they're more than happy to play and deal with uh, media in the classroom and use it as an alternative uh, learning uh, tool. So you need persistence and, and constant engagement and update with what's going in on a global scale. It is very good that uh, media information literacy now is associated with this information because this information is very high in the policy agendas. So this is where the MIL movement is also benefit from. Any other questions? Okay. Our next speaker, Mrs. Anna Charta, Educational Officer at the Cyprus Pedagogical Institute, is going to talk about an exciting project applied in schools, student audiovisual and radio production. 
a framework for learning through information management. Mrs. Charta, welcome. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Uh, thank you, Irini, for a wonderful overview of uh, uh, the, the um, all the efforts and 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 all the history behind uh, addressing media literacy and implementing it in. Uh, in, in schools and in society. Uh, I wish we had more of you, especially in the Greek uh, um, uh, area. Um, is it possible to use to use one of the mics and-, and No. It's not possible. No. Okay. Except we take both of them. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay, let's see how this is gonna work. So I'm using this, all right. So um, I work at the uh, Cyprus Pedagogical Institute and, and uh, especially at the Department of Education, uh, Educational Technology. And my background is uh, twofold. I, I'm a teacher or, or I used to be a teacher and uh, a filmmaker. Um, so I, I think I bring within of what I'm doing in the Cyprus Pedagogical Institute, I, I bring two different dimensions that seem to be um, viable when you are addressing media education uh, in schools. Uh, to... All right, just, just a, a quick uh, overview of uh, uh, Cyprus Pedagogical Institute mission and role. Of course, it's about uh, the continuous uh, training of, of uh, teachers uh, and its role is uh, mainly developmental. It, uh, um, it, it offers in-service training, uh, um, conducts uh, education research, uh, and uh, of course adapts current trends in pedagogy. Uh, and especially bringing new technologies uh, in uh, education, uh, writing and publicating uh, teaching uh, material, books, uh, creating tools, and also creating uh, audio and audiovisual works. And that's uh, one of the parts that I've been uh, uh, working. Oh, this is not. I think we lost the presentation. So I'll be using uh, the computer. And and to uh, brief on uh, on the. The department I work for, of course, we're um, working a lot with uh, digital uh, education and uh, a part of it is uh, media literacy. And we're uh, focusing on uh, introducing programs um, and, and seminars that uh, teachers can participate in 
in order to advance their digital skills, uh, their media literacy skills, uh, and, and how to bring all of this and implement this um, in, uh, in the classroom. So, um, a brief overview of the uh, digital com competences and uh, media uh, education framework that we've been uh, working with. Uh, most of these were already mentioned uh, by Irini. Uh, and of course, the Digital Education Action Plan uh, and all the publications of uh, UNESCO are very important in, in uh, drafting and, and guiding the way of uh, how we can approach uh, media literacy in schools. Uh, what's interesting and, and, and uh, Irini mentioned that as well is that uh, on the recent uh, code of practice on, on disinformation, uh, uh, there is an article on uh, how platforms uh, who already the, the big, big platforms already signed uh, the, uh, the code are addressing the issue of uh, media literacy, the issue of disinformation with uh, actions and with uh, um, seminars and tools uh, that uh, can help users uh, and especially younger users uh, to deal with uh, uh, this information. And of course, we're using all the uh, digital competence frameworks uh, coming from uh, um, uh, the committee and EU. Uh, and, and especially the digital competence framework for citizens uh, addresses the, uh, the students uh, and how to um, raise the level of their competence in class. And of course, the digital, digital, digital competence of uh, educators is a valuable tool for us. And um, we're working as an institute on, on three, uh, let's say, different uh, um, uh, dimensions of the competence uh, development um, that uh, deal with school, teacher, and student uh, separately, and at the same time working uh, together. Some of our programs are addressed only to schools, uh, here you see the, the title of the programs. Some of the, our pl platforms are addressed only to teachers, but then we have um, programs and uh, activities and actions that are addressed to both teachers and schools uh, and uh, students. We're gonna see some of them um, in the next uh, slide. Uh, so the next one, please. So. Here we go with some of the uh, programs. It's good for you to get an overview of what's going on so you understand uh, better of the framework that uh, we're proposing. So uh, this is a recent one, Recording Memory. Um, it's a student uh, documentary production uh, that began in uh, 2019. Um, it addresses uh, the uh, the um, I would say it addresses the need, our need to go back to our roots, discover them, um, find the information that may have been hidden from our uh, view, and bring that back uh, in, in a new set of information and bring it back to the school, to the class, and also to uh, society in general. Um, so it has uh, four thematic uh, areas. Um, and 
let's move to the next one. We're going to talk more about uh, the, the previous one, oh. please. Um, we're going to talk more about the documentary making uh, later on. Another important program is the student web uh, radio. Uh, these programs, they run on a... Uh, I should... No, microphones like that. Okay, so these programs run on a, an annual uh, basis. Uh, teachers and students are involved usually from October to April, May. Um, there are seminars that are um, that guide uh, teachers in all, all these uh, process. Um, the material from these seminars are being used by teachers to educate their, their students, and they are using these, uh, um, uh, let's say, knowledge uh, and skills to, together with the students to create and uh, disseminate uh, their work. Uh, so in uh, student web uh, radio, uh, students actually, go through the process of making a, a radio show uh, uh, that is being uh, broadcasted by European School Radio. I don't know if you are familiar with the, the platform and, and the organization, uh, where students and, and teachers can upload and uh, broadcast their um, shows. Uh, it works on a 24 or seven uh, basis. So there is a platform where all these that students create can, can uh, be hosted. Um, can we go to the next one? Um, another important uh, activity we've been uh, um, working actually with Irini and uh, other partners is uh, the uh, student um, um, radio and music uh, contest, Make It Her, uh, which every year has a different, uh, um, a different theme. This year is um, focused on peace. And we actually closed the, the submission period a few weeks ago when we had uh, 398 uh, submissions just for one year and uh, and this year we had submissions from Croatia and Spain uh, other than Greece and Cyprus it's a very popular uh, competition uh, and um, it, it works on many levels uh, um, in, in the um, the path of, to creation, but also the the path of evaluation. Students get to evaluate together with the uh, jury members uh, the the um, other submissions that belong to the same category that they are. Um, so it's a very special uh, and unique, I would say, uh, contest. Uh, in the, you know, taking into uh, consideration that the evaluation takes place uh, in, in two different strands. Uh, can we see the next one? Another um, important contest is the video uh, production contest on cyber safety where the last two years we've been training the teachers how to create an animation film. The teachers get uh, trained. The, the year before, actually, the students got trained uh, um, with the teachers. But this year, we, we focus more on training the teachers. And the teachers uh, were training uh, students in their uh, schools. Uh, so this is also another great uh, um, action um, that uh, uh, creates uh, the opportunity for teachers and students to work together and also to disseminate uh, their work. Let me see the next one. This is um, j just a, a few words on the social radio um, uh, European project, the, one of the last projects we've been uh, working at, uh, that takes the radio uh, productions, uh, the student radio productions, to uh, to 
another level and that of uh, social uh, responsibility, dealing with social issues and how to becoming uh, a digital uh, citizen and how to become a responsible uh, social uh, person. So uh, um, students get to create uh, programs and uh, radio shows or podcasts or a series of podcasts uh, throughout the year concerning uh, various uh, issues, uh, social issues, environmental issues, uh, uh, citizenship issues. Can we see the next one? And of course, we have a, a um, um, program. This year it hasn't been running, but it's a program that also runs throughout the year that we, we, we train teachers to create a short film that has nothing to do with their, let's say, um, educational uh, obligations. Uh, it's, it comes out of their need to express themselves and be creators. So it's very important to, to get the, the uh, teacher uh, becoming an artist basically and uh, uh, be, taking the role of an artist uh, creating and expressing themselves so whatever we're going to talk about later on also um, um, touches upon uh, this uh, activity that the teachers themselves and only as a group went through next one please uh, of course, we have the Cyprus Safe Internet Center, the same that exists in Greece, as Irini mentioned, with a lot of activities and actions. One of them was the video contest that I mentioned earlier. Next one. We have the eSafe uh, schools, and next one. And the Young Coaches for the Internet. These are programs that are focused on, uh, on how to uh, navigate and manage and, and share content within uh, the internet uh, medium. They don't necessarily use the same, let's say, framework that we're going to present later. Next one. So um, here we are trying to navigate through information trying to uh, find the right information, figuring out how to assemble it together and how to uh, produce an audiovisual work or an audio work that's going to be um, available uh, to a greater audience. Uh, and most of the times a greater audience outside the school. And we're gonna see some examples too. So is it uh, an, an utopia to be, or is it too much to be asking about a happy school? Is it an utopian to be talking about this uh, existing existence of a happy school? Uh, some of you here are teachers and you know how difficult that is even maybe it may even be impossible uh, thinking of the current state of, of, of play, but uh, isn't it uh, about reimagining how things should be? Is, isn't it a life about reinventing uh, new ways or, or addressing back ways we've worked with before and work? Um, so through the programs, uh, the, the ones that I've introduced uh, before, we've seen that uh, the, the transformation of a school to become a, a happy school, because this uh, drive of artistic drive and creative drive goes all around uh, the school and it touches upon the educators, even those that are not um, working for these uh, projects, they uh, they get influenced by what is happening in school. The same uh, goes for the students. So we're proposing uh, an, uh, a framework that is very basic, 
uh, and it comes from the production side of doing creative work. Research produce an impact where students with, uh, through inquiry uh, and production, they become uh, agents of uh, change, sometimes agents um, of uh, goodwill and, and good practices. Can we see the next one? So this is the, the framework. <laughs> it, it starts with researching, of course. Uh, it's our, our first uh, step. Uh, this uh, step that, uh, you know, it, it starts at the beginning, but most of the times it continues throughout a lot of the stages that are gonna follow, uh, especially if the students are doing a documentary, uh, where in order to do a documentary, you're writing the script uh, until the last uh, minute of editing. Um, and then we have the designing uh, phase, designing, uh, um, coming up with the idea, uh, developing the idea and designing in some instances, uh, my own learning. How am I going to learn what I need to learn in order to create this audiovisual uh, work? This usually happens in, in higher, um, let's say education levels, but it can happen in uh, younger ones uh, as well. And then we move on to writing the script. Um, and here again, research continues, uh, unless we're doing an audiovisual uh, work uh, um, that is based on fiction. Uh, then research may uh, stop after uh, finishing the writing of the script. We're moving to organizing the production. Uh, who is going to get involved, where we're going to go to uh, get the material we need or the information we need in order to create our um, content. Who are we inviting to school uh, to talk to us? Where are we going as uh, students and, and teachers to find information? Who is doing what? Uh, who is behind the camera? Who is behind the mic? Who is the narrator? And these are all pro processes that are being um, talked uh, within uh, the class, depending also uh, of the level of the students. And students are deciding together uh, in assigning roles. And then follows filming or recording, um, which is a huge uh, process most of the time. And, and, and kids get to develop their digital um, uh, skills and, and advance them. Uh, sometimes they bring in um, uh, professionals to assist them, but not, not very often. Usually they manage to, um, with the help of, of our staff, to um, learn through this difficult, uh, let's say, process, especially if, it's, uh, if they're doing it for the first time. And um, then we have, of course, the editing, the post-production phase, editing the material, learning how to uh, compose sounds together, how to compose images together uh, using various uh, softwares, producing the final uh, product at the end, and then we're moving to disseminating this. Where, who is watching it? Uh, Maybe we're organizing a, a screen at school. Maybe we're taking it uh, further uh, out in the uh, local community, out in the um, in international uh, communities. We've had uh, um, groups of uh, students who've uh, created documentaries that made it to 
international film festivals and that may, uh, received uh, distinction uh, awards uh, competing with professionals. So there, there, there are different levels that this can play out. It doesn't mean that everybody needs to go that way because the importance is the, the process, of course. Um, so disseminating the work is very important and also reflecting on it. What did we manage to create? What did we learn? Did we change our attitudes in the process? We gained, of course, knowledge, but did we also, and, and, and advance our skills, but we, did we also change our attitudes? We may have been dealing with a controversial issue or, or any other issue and, and had a, a set uh, mind, uh, a particular mindset. Uh, did that change in the process? And the last one is reimagining the reinventing the future. How did this whole process we as teachers and students went through uh, brings us back to where we started and rethinking how we can reshape uh, and reimagine uh, our future, uh, our future in, in, in the classroom, in school, or uh, uh, in general, um, in, in the social context. So this is the framework. Um, and we can move to quickly see the uh, next uh, slide, the next one. Uh, there should be one previous than that. No? No, oh, we're missing one. Okay. So uh, managing the information, um, can we move one slide just to see if we have them further? Ah, let's see this one first and then we go back uh, to the other one. Um, the various skills and processes, can we? So the various um, skills and processes uh, that are uh, being developed uh, here, you can see them uh, on the screen. It may seem that this is too much. It, 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 we're not, you, you haven't really touched upon all of these skills and, and, and uh, uh, worked with these processes, but uh, it, it is true, it's real. We, uh, the students uh, um, and teachers with them uh, communicate, adapt. They um, bring a lot of enthusiasm in this uh, process. Um, they express ideas. Uh, they invent, they imagine, they meet and communicate with uh, people at different levels, uh, even communicating and collaborating with the students uh, um, in their classroom is like a, a, a major, highlight in the process. Uh, they, they've actually said it many times in the questionnaires we give them that we never thought that we could have uh, collaborated that well with uh, um, students we didn't know uh, and we had the opportunity to meet. Um, and let's move to the next one, uh, to the previous one. where here we have the process of uh, managing the uh, information. Where do they find information? It's not only in books, in, in texts, uh, they search in audio libraries, they search in video libraries, um, they search in archives, national archives. Of course, they verify, they need to verify the information even 
They need to verify the information they get from live sources, because sometimes even information you get from live sources may not be that uh, credible. They transform this information into the project's uh, idea. Um, and of course, they move uh, to uh, uh, applying uh, 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 this information in order to create uh, uh, the uh, the final product, they may need to uh, adapt it according to the audience uh, they have in front of them or according to uh, the aim, uh, what they're aiming at, disseminate uh, the information, and then they come with a new, let's say, set of information that, uh, that can go out to uh, local uh, communities or uh, global, global communities. A very important aspect of all of this, and Irini mentioned it as well before, is the ethical use of information. They need to get consent beforehand uh, for whomever they are uh, recording or uh, filming. Uh, they need to have, we need to have consent from their parents that they're allowed to work on this project. Um, uh, and uh, then they pay respect and they understand this process that uh, once I've created something, uh, of course it belongs to everybody, to the, uh, the team. Uh, and it, for anybody else to use it, they need to have our, our permission as we also need to have permission to use any of the material we're using in our film. So they're going through the process of asking, let's say the National Archives or the National Broadcasting Corporation to give them permission to use the material, uh, the audiovisual material they're using or the audio material. Um, so this is a very important, uh, let's say aspect. And also having in mind how their final, uh, let's say, uh, product will not have any harmful uh, effect uh, or, or try to minimize the harmful effect uh, as much uh, as possible. That's also an aspect they need to consider. Not to, to, to present, uh, let's say, one of their subjects uh, in a very demeaning way. That could be... Um, that can happen. Next one. Sing your own. Okay. All right. So we've seen the skills and processes. Uh, and let's see an implementation uh, example uh, from, from a radio um, show. Um, these uh, children, they uh, come from the village of Birgos. It's uh, at the very, let's say, west uh, area of Cyprus, uh, uh, near um, the occupation uh, lines. So uh, they live in a remote uh, place. And they decided to do... Uh, um, uh, a radio show on the Mediterranean uh, pollution problems. Um, uh, one of the activities they did was visiting the local radio station, and that's where you see them uh, uh, there. Uh, so they got to experience uh, the recording and editing process together with professionals. This is not something that happens usually, but in their case, it worked very well because they they live in a sort of remote area, and they, it was the closest thing they could have to, let's say, journalists' uh, uh, support. Um, so all these are the activities they they uh, went through the uh, the design uh, from creating their uh, sound. Uh, um, the advertising, let's say, 
um, uh, sound for their uh, show, from uh, researching, of course, selecting uh, uh, information, uh, from um, uh, getting data through a, a research, a survey they did on the notions of uh, the people on their, of their community, on uh, uh, how they, what they think about the garbage uh, and the trash that they find in the sea, and who they think is responsible for it. Uh, uh, so they have very interesting uh, data. Maybe we can see the next one. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, they came up with, uh, the data, they came up with all of the information, they made the, the, um, the show, uh, they broadcasted it, uh, they created a contract with the, uh, C, uh, how they are, uh, are going to behave from now on in their relationship with the C. And all this led uh, to the community council uh, using uh, uh, bringing in more trash bins uh, along the sea uh, side to minimize the uh, the garbage uh, um, pollution. Uh, there was a short example. Some thoughts on, on students uh, following the implementation. Uh, what was the most exciting thing uh, for them during uh, the implementation and um, their um, responses range from uh, the result that we loved, uh, the answers we received from people, the whole process, uh, the process of creating uh, questions, uh, that this was a great uh, history lesson. It wasn't actually a history lesson. It was a, a, a life uh, lesson. And the thoughts of uh, teachers uh, who, of course, saw the many benefits this whole process had and the opportunity they had to collaborate uh, with them and and, and uh, feel proud uh, of their work and that they managed to advance skills, oral communication, uh, written communication, digital uh, skills. Um, one of the uh, things that many uh, children uh, mention is that uh, the fact that they managed to get through anxiety uh, uh, with uh, public speaking, uh, that was uh, one of the things that was coming up uh, a lot. So I'm finishing up with uh, what's missing from the current act of play. Irini mentioned uh, all of them as well. Uh, we basically need to um, have a coordinator uh, in, in our areas uh, who can uh, push for um, media literacy being enhanced and being actually embedded in the educational uh, system. And for this to happen, uh, different actors, uh, policy um, um, stakeholders, educators, uh, media experts uh, need to come together uh, to push this forward. So we have a lot of work to go along. Thank you for listening. and. Um, I hope you you've uh, uh, get the gist of what we're trying to uh, promote. Thank you. Um, are there any questions uh, towards our two speakers before we go on a break? Anything anybody would like to discuss? Elena, to uh, join it. Thank you. I'm Elena Diomidi from the University of Cyprus Library. Thank you very much and congratulations for the nice and interesting speeches. Uh, 
It's okay. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, how the speakers see the role of the library or the librarians involved in all this process, considering that now the information and the um, evaluation of information is so much uh, uh, through the internet now available. So how you see the role of the libraries in all educational system level? and how the synergies can be applied in order to fulfill the needs and the vision about uh, creating people with the uh, skills and uh, IML uh, formation literacy uh, skills. For both of them, please. We're talking about a digital uh, technical skills. So <laughs> you see what happens when we have issues with the microphones. So it is very important that you uh, put up this question because uh, what we presented with Anna, you may all wonder, you know, so where do we stand? What is the role uh, within this uh, uh, field? So it is, uh, I talked about synergies. So, uh, and one of, uh, of the morning speakers, they said uh, he mentioned about the school libraries uh, project that is going to be implemented here in Cyprus. So we need synergies. We need the educators to work closely with the librarians and their archi the archivists um, to guide them and uh, to to show them um, about the repositories, where this information uh, that, that you have, you know, in the libraries, in terms of audiovisual, digital content, networks, uh, um, um, or, or, or micro uh, databases. Um, and then uh, in order to be able to talk to the students about quality content and how they can use it for their own research to produce uh, either uh, a media production project like radio or TV. So uh, also um, the librarians, they can get invited to schools and talk to students about uh, where you can find reliable information and how you can use it, retrieve it, adjust it to your own information needs so that they know where to look for once they want to be uh, engaged with the project. I mean, in Greece, when we have the short film uh, competitions about short film projects that students uh, are going to make within some student contents, they go to uh, uh, there, the public service broadcasters uh, archives, they go to libraries and they uh, uh, take the content they need to support the research or to use it in their media product with respect to copyright issues. This is a very important uh, uh, issue that you can uh, uh, teach the students how to treat copyrights, not just take an extract, an extract from uh, uh, audiovisual content and then and just not mention you have to mention the credits uh, uh, all the copyrights involved and to use it under creative commons so at first they need uh, the educators to work closely with librarians and the librarians can also visit the schools you know to have some open discussions with the students Anna? You don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't have much to add to that, uh, to what Irene said, but uh, uh, from our experience, it's, it's been very, um, it's a crucial role, the role that librarians uh, uh, play, uh, and especially in the archives, uh, where students uh, uh, visit archives and visit the, um, these information centers, which may be photographs, uh, audiovisual, uh, video, um, they need the guidance, uh, where to find the uh, information. Uh, so it's a very crucial role uh, librarians have to play. And um, uh, Irene's suggestion, you know, uh, visiting school, it's great, but it's also greater when they visit uh, the libraries, uh, because that's when you're actually on location and you do the work uh, a professional would do also. I don't know if that covers your question. The tools that we have in our process 
and teachers and librarians and also food libraries in order to fulfill the needs. Mm -hmm. And also, I think it's not to be for the rate of the students. <laughs> when they are very picky about their assignment, they don't think that they have to take some other skills or so we have to give them the motivation and collaboration without the importance of picking this this skill. Let me tell you that uh, uh, their visits to to libraries and to these centers is one of the things they mentioned that it was exciting to 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 be there. It's one of the things that they really get uh, enthusiastic uh, about. May I also add that um, uh, whenever there is a student project going on, uh, the most usual thing that the educators will tell them, go and look for it in the internet, uh, try and do your own research online. Uh, what they have to, um, to, to know and get familiarized is, is that ac except for the online research, you can go and visit the, the libraries, uh, the research centers, uh, the, the archives, physical visits, and then the librarians can, tell, can show them and guide them what uh, to, to find in their own research. So not just limit yourself to an online research, which is the easiest thing to do uh, in a digital environment, but go and actually pay a visit to uh, a library. Any more questions? Okay, we will now have a quick break and um, we'll return for the next session at 11. Thank you. We are about to begin our next session. May I ask everybody to get back to their seats? Thank you. The next session is about to begin. Thank you. May I ask everybody to take their seats? We, we will now connect remotely with our second keynote speaker, Professor Dr. Francisco Javier Garcia Marco. Professor of Library and Information Science at the University of Zaragoza in Spain. Can I introduce you to Dr. Garcia Marco? Here, he achieved his PhD in philosophy and arts in 1994, while he has been the director of the Department of Library and Information Science and the director of the Education Innovation Program, he organized the LIS postgraduate program of the University of Zaragoza. He is also chair of IBERSID, an international conference on information and documentation systems since 1986. 96, excuse me. 
He is the publisher and director of the journals Scrire, Representation and Organization of Knowledge and Diversity Information and Documentation Systems magazine, as well as a committee member of several other international journals. He has researched and published extensively on the theory of information, knowledge organization, information literacy, digital change, and its social, ethical, and juridical, excuse me, juridical impact. Today, Dr. Professor Francisco Javier Garcia Marco will, will present us a motivating SWOT analysis of the multi-literacies approach. Dr. Garcia Marco, we are with you. We are watching you. Thank you very much. Um, it's the first thing I want to say is that um, I'm very thankful for you for inviting me to your conference and to have this opportunity to, to share. Uh, and well, also to say that I'm a big uh, fan of your project, Educability, which, which I, I think it's uh, splendid. Uh, I'm going to try to share my, my screen. This one. I hope it's working. Yes. Is it okay? Yes. yes, it's okay. Oh, great. Thank you very much. Well, the, the idea of this um, this uh, presentation is a short analysis of the multiliteracy approach. Um, and uh, my presentation will have four parts. First, to explain the idea, then laying the foundations for common discussion, mainly, the, you know, the terminology, uh, the problem of the a definition of literacy, multiliteracy, and so on. And then I, I will propose a brainstorming about the, the, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of our approach, and a conclusion to end uh, with some final words. Well, regarding the aims and context of my of my presentation, you know that SWOT analysis is very common. We are using it, we are using it all the time, has been extensively used for the evaluation of a specific information literacy programs and services. And if you search in Google Scholar for reference, uh, for example, information literacy, SWOT, or media literacy, and SWOT, uh, or data li literacy and SWOT, you will find a lot of uh, specific analys analysis or, uh, in this direction. But in this paper, I intend to explore the strategic situation of the multiliteracy field itself with a focus in libraries and researches, because we, we will see that we can take many different perspectives. Um, regarding the scope, uh, a SWOT analysis might offer very extensive results, of course, uh, and the aims of this paper are a bit more limited. Uh, these are highlighting some of the more important and pervasive issues in the multiliteracy approach that, of course, we fully endorse, by the way. So showing how strategic analysis and SWOT analysis in particular can be an important tool for information literacy success, showing the importance of a cost-benefit analysis of our information literacy programs and actions, but for a motivational purpose, uh, this presentation will be more centered in our strengths and opportunities. You know very well what, what's SWOT analysis. Uh, this is only to remind briefly. 
you know. Um, the idea is to uh, explore how our work relates to our context in terms of a successful performance and to see which factors can be uh, influencing there. Uh, and we take two dimensions, one regarding the positive or negative aspects and the other internal, uh, external regarding, you see, our field, our organization, or, or the factors in the environment. And in this way, we have the strengths, uh, which we must grow, the weaknesses, we should diminish them, the opportunities on which we can thrive, we, that we should leverage. And finally, threats that can disrupt our efforts and we should counter, counteract them, of course. To do a SWOT analysis in such a wide um, field is complicated because you know that SWOT analysis is always the representation of a perspective in conflict with others. It's, uh, you know, it's a, some kind of competing analysis. You take the, uh, the, the, the position of a competing part, for example, uh, an enterprise in, in a market or or a, or a political party uh, in, 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 in the elections or, you know. But the, the multilateralist field is transdisciplinary. So we, we find too many groups of interest. There is not a properly a, a discipline for member membership uh, and affiliation, but different perspectives. For example, the, the educational, the one from librarians, uh, the, from many specialities, you know, media, scientific information, statistical information, and so on. And also a fluid transit um, al along multiple projects. So any SWOT analysis of the multiliteracy field will be affected by the institutional or disciplinary affiliation of the research. In this paper, we try to take a library and information science perspective, but trying not to be too exclusive and trying to consider others as, as, as much as possible. Well, we are now to begin the second part of my presentation, which, uh, which is uh, about um, some basic defini definitions around the concept of literacy and it's derivate, you know, and it's not easy to characterize the multiliteracy field um, because um, it has been growing along the time. Um, in the, now, now we are going to explore, uh, firstly, uh, some definitions in two main dictionaries and then try to see this uh, a long time in, in history to, to gain a wider scope. I, I should advise here my, the paper of my colleague, Miguel Angel Marzal, Marzal, a taxonomic proposal for multiliteracies and their competencies, which deals, uh, among other papers, with, with this field. And, and he, 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 he does a lot of references to, to other relevant research. Well, you, we can see the Cambridge Dictionary um, group have different definitions, and we can see the progress in them. Uh, First, they, they talk about the ability to read and write, which is the typical and um, um, more basic definition. For example, when we say far more resources are needed to improve other literacy, or the country has a literacy rate of, of almost 98%. Then and they, they, they show another sense of the word, which is uh, the knowledge of a particular subject specialize for example when, when dealing with with computer literacy which is also an example of the third sense which is an um, or meaning a basic a skill or knowledge for of a subject the oxford reference uh, dictionary of media and communication uh, gives more references uh, but it's more 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 or, or, or less the same it can be otherwise of course uh, first, the ability to read or write and write. Uh, also, the functional literacy, which is wider because uh, it, it can include all the essential skills for daily life and work. And um, but on the other on the other hand, the specialized knowledge, specialized knowledge in some in some uh, specialties. Uh, 
and is used more metaphorically for technical competence. For example, here they say computer literacy or critical discrimination in media or news literacy, or even more broadly in cultural literacy, information literacy, visual literacy. And finally, there is a definition regarding, you know, the philosophy of, of, of writing and reading. Of course, uh, literacy has been seen as something that en enables logical thinking and objectivity, uh, which, uh, which is a, uh, uh, very important for intergenerational inter cultural transmission. Uh, and this, uh, this um, approach has been also being criticized, for example, by, by Brian Street, who criticized the, 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 the media determinants of, of this approach. So we have different approaches. Uh, the question is, uh, might we order the senses or definition in, a, a, in an evolutive path? Well, um, we can see it clearly that in classical antiquity was mostly about writing and reading, that in the 19th century, it becomes something for the people, for all the citizens. The scope changed very much because then the after it was, uh, no, the after before it was specialized. In the, in the fetus, it grows very much um, with a special uh, literacy uh, and the multiliteracy explode. And now in the first century, we, th we have the problem of the digital change, the interrelation among media, hypothesis, and of course, transliteracy. Here we have a presentation of how the, the, the terminology has been evolving from literacy only read and write to literacy, perhaps including classical culture, numeracy, science literacy, science literacy, interliteracy when topics get mixed, like in information and media literacy, multiliteracy with explosion of specialization. We have a lot of them uh, in the in the uh, in the list um, in the list downwards, you know, civic, computer, critical, data, digital, future literacy, which is quite interesting, health, information, um, health, uh, and so on. Uh, now, um, we, we get into, into, into transliteracy, which is crossing along all these, uh, through all these uh, literacies, and finally, uh, the, the problem of uh, empowering the user and so it becomes, a, a, as you have in, um, said in the previous presentation, an active uh, citizen communicating in the, in the new social digital world. Here, only for the, the topic of media and information literacy, we can see 23 literacies that uh, the UNESCO document um, and deals with we can see the complexity of the of the of the of this work well get, let's get into 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 the into, into the sort of brainstorming I, I i i say brainstorming because of course you you will sure be able to contribute with many more let's begin with the strengths and um, of course uh, the the Multiliteracy approach is a multi-purpose set of tools. So the information seems a very simple problem, problem uh, Bateson define it, it as, the dif as a difference that makes a difference, but in fact, it's very kaleidosco kaleidoscopic, you know, because of different formats, technologies, channels, genres, and so on. And the multiliteracy approach offers a multi-purpose set of tools for any information related problem. For example, uh, um, so we say that it allows to address specific but complex problems in a very powerful way. We have here a, a recent study from Colte, the width and depth of literacy for tackling the COVID-19 um, infodemic. And we can say, yeah, and he uses all these literacies to, um, to illuminate um, the, the topic and to propose actions. Uh, we, are, we are talking about information, privacy, critical health, 
science, visual, and media, and data literacy. It's very quite interesting, and there are a, a number of of similar papers now available. Another strand is, of course, synergy. There is an incredible community of practice, a lot of people uh, researching in the different literacies and su uh, such a wide community of research and practice with so many different backgrounds, knowledge and skills uh, is great for alliances, interchange and influence, and of course, to compete. We can see there, uh, be, uh, there are two, two graphs from you know the web of science, um, and especially for the, 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 the search on the left, which, so, uh, uh, which deals with all the literacies, uh, we, we can see how many disciplines are, are, are related to it, from education, public and bi biomedical occupational health, information science and library science, of course, linguistics, but also psychology, Health, public services, medical information, business, and so on, um, and even in the more specific uh, field of multiliteracy and transliteracy, we can see very different um, disciplines um, coming into work with it. Well, another uh, talking about synergy, of course, liter lit lit Literacies reinforce each other when users are able to work with their different approach, approaches. They understand, learn, and communicate better and using different code, different language, different media. And from our perspective, we deal with different levels and publics. Um, very related, uh, we have to talk about the bright side of overlapping between the different multi literacies, like the right like the graph on the on the right shows us and because we will see also overlapping as a weakness, weakness of course and but here we we, we must stress that, that it's an occasion for interdisciplinary team work in general courses and at strength very enriching the students can receive perspectives from other fields they learn to appreciate other professionals in practice they become nearer to work experience uh, and can do interdisciplinary work around common problems, which is very important nowadays. And also thinking in the academic, in the academics, uh, it's very useful for for, for improving uh, our concept through mutual debate and clarification. Um, Another strength is standardization. You know, uh, there are very good programs now and very good. Uh, syllabi uh, that we can count on them, which are the result of a, of a strong cooperation inside the professional and academic organizations and inspire, inspired by research and practice leaders, very, very, very committed and very clever people with uh, many positive consequences because we, we have a common frame to work from and reach into uh, and the continuous improvement cycle is better ensured. Times and resources are saved. Training the trainers is much easier. Meta-analysis meta and benchmarking becomes possible. An institutionalized social and political frame for cooperation is developed. Also, uh, the multiliteracies, or, or more specifically, the transliteracy approach um, can help us to organize liter li literacies through, through common lenses to, to give them unity. Um, there are six a common background to organize the different literacies through common lenses, so they can be easily understandable to, to, to many publics. Uh, one of them, of course, is the, the distinction of levels of literacy, you know, uh, the basic and the critical, which appears in almost any literacy. And another, of course, it, it has been dealt by, by the other presenters, you know, is the, the infoworm model, so to say, the, the information anom anomalies problem with, you know, sub information, information overload, uh, disinformation, malinformation, contra information, and the ideal of optimal information. We have also weaknesses. Uh, one of the main ones is that concepts are usually polysemic, which, which disturbs the logical coherence of the whole 
field. Let's see only some examples. For, for example, data, data in social sciences and, and science, sciences in general is usually a quantitative variable. But in computer science is any string uh, that can be processed as a unit. For example, a complete thing, thing can, can become a, a data. Um, the same with information, because we can distinguish uh, data and information literacy, but data is properly a kind of, of, uh, of information. Also, the problem with media, we, we, we understand by media, usually mass media, but of course, specialist, specialized media like scientific publications are a kind of media. We have also a grid overlapping we have talked about that before, um, among the different multiliteracies. Uh, this is a strength and also a weakness, uh, because um, when we are dealing with the same audience, with the same people, um, we, we, we repeat ourselves, we can be incoherent, we say, we'll see it later, and this brings inefficiency, loss of time, competing models with confusion, and the user can become a, a, a bit a, a disconnected, can lose confidence of interest. Uh, here we have uh, that it, it can create confusion, keep apart specialists, complicate interdisciplinary collaboration and dialogue, and make it difficult to create a common concept map or ontology of our field. Another weakness can be the reliance on, on a general approach. Standardization is very good, but you know that literacies are always subject specific. A very good example is when you search databases. It's very different to search for chemical information or for historical information, for example. And models can be too abstract to engage students. Uh, it's very important to land on their specific interests with proper examples, nearer, the nearer, the better. There is a danger of superficiality because the, 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 the field is so wide that we can uh, say very, very little about many things. And so teachers must have a wide scope, but the, the core same must be uh, informative, challenging, and specific to the audience. We have also very important opportunities. Uh, the main one is knowledge society with the digital revolution, globalization, knowledge economy, for industrial revolution, professional education system, online learning, which require a new level of basic knowledge for modern citizens, no more only read and write or even numeracy, but new literacies, multiple literacies, and of course, transliteracy. Another opportunity is a strong institutional alignment. Uh, we have seen the, the very good presentation from our colleague from the UNESCO. And of course, we have the, 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 the SDG with the topic four. I won't insist on it. And also, the, the, you know, we are in the middle of a revolution in the educational indust industry because of, of, the, of, of the globalization of, of, and of the digital world with the learning and learning, competition, efficient use of resources, which is more and more important now with the crisis, uh, and also teamwork and cooperation. Uh, and the many, liter many literacies are an opportunity to defend, to efficiently deal with educational challenges, you know. Another threat, threat is the, the pressures from educational planners for a standard syllabi. You know, the, you have, we have the that the students have very different profiles. We have talked about that. At least Four, four, four levels, experts, conscious with minor lags, conscious with major lags, a completely uninformed and unmotivated and very different personal qualities, qualities and learning styles. Um, so if students are exposed 
to too much information that they already know, they will feel they are losing their time, especially in voluntary courses. We have to deal with this fact professionally by, by di diagnosing them when entering the formative mentoring programs and tailoring or facetting our literal pro literacy programs to them. Well, competition, lack of coordination in, in, in the big societal, societal context can be also a, a, a problem. Um, let's conclude because we are almost out of time. Um, the first thing, uh, Regarding, you know, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, uh, we can get some final conclusions. Uh, we have seen that our strengths conceal many times weaknesses too. Uh, this is typical of, of arts, of, 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 of applied, applied sciences. Every action entails advantages and disadvantages. This is, this is in some way normal. But also most of the weaknesses conceal clear opportunities too. Uh, on the other side, the wine, white wines of, of history blow in, in our favor. Uh, the opportunities are big. And even threats can be a motivation not to become complacent. Of course, we have to address the differences uh, in user needs and, and users must be at the centers. We have seen that there are, there are differences from the from the part of the teachers' focus, and all, also because of the very different contexts. But uh, the, the the very important thing is to focus on user needs. You know, depending on age, on, on gender, on background, background, previous previous knowledge, and their situation. And finally, I would like to say that transliteracy, not, not a very easy subject, it's, it is understood in very different ways, but I, we can see it as a maximizing strategy, as a very big uh, uh, conceptual opportunity, because it can, helps, it can help to, to map literacy more carefully. You know, there are overlaps, common models offering a general frame that can make learning much easier. Uh, relative strengths, interesting cross-border roads, also to manage redundancies, eliminating unuseful redundancies, avoiding incoherences and conflicting messages, and, uh, and to adjust the offer to a specific groups of students and different situations. So, if Charisto Polygia team prosohis us, thank you very much for your attention. And that is all uh, for the moment. And you very much for this opportunity to share with you. Thank you so much, Dr. Garcia Marco. Um, your insights and perspective were truly valuable for our audience. Please stay with us online. Uh, your insights and perspective, uh, sorry, um, we will uh, have questions occur after all the presentations in the session. Uh, we continue now with our project presentations. Educability Partners will present the overall results and outcomes of the project. First presentation, Educability, an opportunity for educators and librarians, project overview. I would like to invite on stage Mrs. Fodini Eftimiu, researcher, and Mr. Dimitrios Squiz, assistant professor from the Department of Archival, Library and Information Studies, University of West Attica in Greece. Parakalo. Good morning. Meaning okay. sounds. Okay, good morning. I'm for the knee. Uh, we know each other. We have to share. Okay, we have to share also. Third time is better. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Oh. This is your presentation. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Good morning for the third time. I think the third time is better. <laughs> okay. Um, my colleague Dimitri, Squeeze, and me are going to present the project overview, how we started. We would like to say that Educability started in autumn of 2020 as a pioneering endeavor to meet urgent requirements of the current information and knowledge society, namely to build capacity information uh, literacy for you educators and librarians. Okay, I want to go forward. Okay, I will. I can take the microphone. So, can you hear me now? Thank you. No. Can you hear me now? Okay. <laughs> so, the innovations it aspired to implement aimed at four directions. Direction one concerned a strategic goal to foster collaboration and create the common infrastructure for in, uh, information literacy further development at transnational level, as you see, uh, via a memorandum of cooperation, sustainability, and transferability between five partners in four countries. You see, it's uh, Cyprus, Greece, Spain, and Serbia. Let me go. Direction two concerned a conceptual innovation to investigate the relation of six emerging literacies to information literacy. How? Via research source mapping for digital literacy, mobile literacy for media and information literacy, for sustainable development literacy, for critical literacy, and for data literacy. And via creating relevant curriculum. The content of each curriculum aims to train educators and librarians in the, skill, in the skills of information literacy. Although they differ in content, as, Pab, as Javier said before, we have multiliteracies, they are all cons uh, concerned with the development of adequate skills in the search, evaluation, analysis, synthesis, production, and dissemination of information. In addition, they all support the, concepts, uh, the concept of learning through the contact, contact of the individual with information. This is a complex process that goes beyond simply, uh, lo simply locating information and finding answers to a specific question. Uh, they essentially focus on the search and interpretation of elements that will allow a multifaceted, multifaceted and more objective perception around the topic, also on the, on the effective and ethical use of information and on the effective production and dissemination of new information and knowledge. In this light, we can definitely place uh, all these literacies, digital, mobile, media, sustainable, critical data literacy, uh, in the broader context of information literacy and call them information-related literacies. Direction three, targeted at using and expanding open source information and communication educational technologies. Uh, this was done in order to disseminate interactive, self-paced information uh, literacy educational content for educators and librarians. You may find their uh, exercises uh, that um, uh, are for students as well, but uh, teachers may adapt them on their own uh, way. Okay. Direction four is educational. Educability wishes to support the ongoing training of those human resources, educators and librarians, who can share knowledge with the, com with the communities they serve, namely their pupils, their students, the wider public. 
And now about the process. Uh, what we would like to stress here is that educability implementation process was based on a division of labor between the partners for the production of four intellect intellectual outputs, as we can see on the right. These intellectual outputs were interconnected in order to bring innovative results, we hope. Each intellectual output uh, included specific tasks with intermediate and final deliverables, but uh, they were guided each time by one of the educability partners. For instance, you may see that Univa was the leader for intellectual output one. Uh, Dimitris will talk about it. Uh, Cyprus University of Technology and the library, of course, uh, was the leader for intellectual output two uh, that one of our colleagues, Erasmia, will talk later. Uh, University Carlos Pristera de Madrid was the leader for intellectual output three, the information literacy training package, which is uh, available for all of you. And I think Sara and Belen will talk about it. And um, the Transnational Memorandum of Cooperation, Sustainability and Transferability, uh, where the leader was uh, the Library of University of Novisat, and uh, where Mirjana will talk to us. Uh, what I would like also to say is that it is important to mention that all partners contributed collaboratively to the process of achieving these results. So collaboration is very important. And now the outcomes. Over 700 information literacy scientific researches to study. Six suggested information literacy related curricula evaluated by 60 experts in four countries. Seven information literacy related open access, self-paced free to download the courses for educators and librarians containing 40 modules, over 160 learning and teaching activities, e-quizzes, reflective questions and answers, crosswords, flashcards, videos, etc. Rich complementary teaching and learning material. Educability, we hope, is an opportunity for educators and librarians to improve their existing skills, to develop new ones, to support their continuing professional and personal development at their own pace and free of charge, to act as multipliers of information literacy skills and the related subjects, and to the communities they serve, and it is an opportunity to become members of the educability community by creating and sharing their own information literacy e content. So you may create and share your content with us. To contribute to establishing a common understanding of the value of information literacy, to expand the know how and the infrastructures that support collaborative and transnational initiatives for information literacy and to disseminate, we can all together disseminate the benefits towards the wider society. And now I call uh, Dimitris Huis to continue with intellectual output one. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being here. Good morning from my side also. Of course, I would like to thank the organizers of the conference. Uh, it is a great success. Um, what we have done with uh, Fotini is that we have combined two presentations. We gave you an, an, an overview of the project and the stages and the collaborations and the partners and the intellectual outputs, which were the main outcome of the project. Now what I'm going to do is uh, give you some highlights of intellectual output one, and I will focus on a, not an innovative uh, way of uh, extracting information from experts, but and on uh, procedures that we follow in this project. And I think the results were very good. So we have uh, uh, the intellectual output one, the transnational information literacy ecosystem mapping. We, as UNIVA, we were, we were the responsible for that task. And uh, as Fotini uh, already has presented, it was um, the beginning of the project uh, where we set up all the information, all the data that we need to form the curriculum for the information literacies that we want to develop. Uh, 
we have to make some um, priorit prioritization in the subject on the topics that we will uh, uh, develop and uh, of course create because in then in the timeline of the project we 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 will not be able we weren't able to uh, expand or to develop uh, the full uh, uh, courses and all the topics needed so here are the tasks of the intellectual output one the first task was uh, about gathering uh, information doing literacy review uh, visiting websites uh, uh, finding other similar projects uh, 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 like uh, the one that we were running and extract all the information from them. What we try to do through this process is uh, to find definitions which were uh, given by other experts about every literacy, media literacy, from critical literacy, etc. Uh, we try to identify concepts which in the next stop of the project will turn to be um, units of the curriculum. We try to identify learning objectives and outcomes. And we also um, uh, choose the most appropriate teaching and evaluation methods. So what we did, we explore 700, 700 papers and of course other sources. And we tried, we tried to identify for, for its literacy, this uh, information. Again, the number of information that we have retrieved, it was a lot. They were many. Um, so what we decided to do is to, okay, uh, we didn't want to be, um, uh, uh, we, we want to, to, to uh, outsource our efforts and involve the community. So we, what we did is to form a pool of experts. Uh, its team of experts was formated uh, in the country of its partner. So what we managed to do is to uh, create pool of experts around 15, 20 per team uh, in its country uh, from uh, its partner. And uh, we um, implemented some Delphi studies. I will explain uh, the methodology in the next slides. Uh, in order for these experts, uh, to decide or to give us uh, uh, some uh, proposals about uh, which definitions are the most appropriate or the most um, uh, suitable for our needs, which concepts, uh, which learning objectives, or uh, which teaching and evaluation methods. Um, through the Delphi studies, what we have achieved is that we uh, work with the experts uh, to make a prioritization, a ranking. We have, let's say, 15 definitions. They have to rank them. They have to decide the order from the most appropriate to the less appropriate or the less valid, et cetera. Um, okay, Delphi study is something that uh, helped us to define and to make some uh, prioritizations uh, in the concepts, in the subs in the topics that I explained before. Uh, it took place uh, in December, 2021. Of course, in the information science, in the library science, Delphi studies are not uh, something strange. It's very common. I mean, uh, there, has, there has been uh, more than 122 uh, Delphi studies around uh, library information science uh, issues. Uh, and so we thought that this uh, methodology will also validate our results, our outcomes in the next uh, intellectual outputs. Uh, we follow a simplified methodology of Delphi studies with two rounds. Uh, I will explain uh, in, uh, in brief what, how you can implement a Delphi study. Uh, uh, you have uh, a set of uh, questions to the experts. You provide them with some topics, and then you ask them to rank them. I mean, put them in order or give, uh, let's say, a grade. Um, the aim of this ranking or grading is for the group of experts to reach a consensus. Uh, but in order to identify the level of consensus achieved, you have to have some statistical uh, indicators. So the Delphi study provides this type of statistical indicators and 
every time that you ask a, a set of experts, a group of experts uh, to rank uh, some uh, uh, answers to the questions, you can calculate a statistical indicator uh, that indicates you the level of consensus. If the level of consensus is low, meaning that there is a there is a great divergence between the answers of the experts, then you can go, you can implement another round of uh, uh, Delphi study. Ask them again uh, the same question, but now you provide them uh, with the grade that comes from the whole group and the grade that they have chosen in the first round, in the previous round. And now you ask them uh, if they uh, insist in their grading or they might change their opinion or view. After this round, I mean, they also grade again or rank again the, the options in the, the questions. And then you recalculate the statistical indicator about the level of consensus. If the level of consensus is better, then you stop this uh, process and you can implement uh, more rounds in order to reach a high level of consensus. Of course, uh, it's not possible. I mean, it's not uh, feasible every time that you implement this type of Delphi studies to, to reach a consensus. You might not. But in most of the cases, like us, like in our cases, we manage to reach a good level of consensus between the experts. Uh, after explaining uh, a little bit about how the Delphi study uh, works, I will give you some slides. We used um, a, a service, an external service for implementing the Delphi study. It's called Wealthy. You can Google it. It is a good uh, online tool with subscriptions that you can use it uh, to implement this kind of uh, studies. This is, uh, let's say, a, a, a slide that uh, we use this type of uh, grading system we use for the uh, mil media and information literacy co uh, definitions grading. So what was uh, available to the expert was the definition, and then he could grade the definition from one to 10, uh, uh, depending on his uh, opinion about uh, the suitability or the appropriate appropriateness of the definition. Another type of question, uh, is was uh, about the key concept. Here were 12 key concepts. I mean, they couldn't fit in the slide. And what uh, the expert had to do is to move uh, these concepts uh, up or down according to uh, his uh, opinion about the relevance to the uh, under investigation literacy. Uh, another question is, another type of question is completely agree, agree, disagree, and completely disagree. Uh, this had to do with the learning objectives. And the final, with the key teaching evaluation methods, again, we have the rank type questions. I mean, let's assume that this is uh, the final question for our Delphi study. And we have the experts moving the items of the question up and down. And at the end of this process, he was pressing or she was, they were pressing submit, and we get the results. Uh, the results were analyzed then. Here at the table at the left, uh, it was the results from the first round of the Delphi study. So you can see that uh, teaching and evaluation method number three was the first one, meaning that most of the experts uh, considered this as the most appropriate. Then uh, teaching and evaluation method one was second, teaching and evaluation method eight was third, and so on. I mean, someone could uh, assume that, okay, we finished. We did the round one. We got a ranking around these questions, these terms, and we are happy now to continue implementing them. No. If we go through the results and implement uh, what is called convergence an indicator about the level of convergence, we see that it's too low. It's a Kendall's W factor. And the score there is uh, 0.3234. It's considered too low, meaning that the questions, the, the, the responses uh, of the experts were very diverse. So this means, this means uh, ranking, it's not very good. Um, uh, people that they have studied the Delphi studies, 
they propose a factor between 0 0.5, 0 0.7 and above to have some good level of conceptions. So what we did, we provide this information, not us, the wealthy system, started a second round. They provided the ranking uh, results, the total ranking results for all, from all the experts. And the, 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 the grade that, uh, the order that the expert has given to the first round. So we provide them with this information and we initiated a second round. So as you can see here, the results were slightly differentiated. We have here some kind of swap between eight and one, uh, five and six. But the most important thing is that the level of consensus went above 0 0.5, which is considered moderate, not very good, moderate. Um, if, we if we would like to be more accurate, we should implement in the third round of, uh, of uh, depth study. But the, we didn't do that because now we have to take into account the fatigue of the experts and um, the more rounds you do, uh, the less people uh, continue to participate. So we might end up with inconclusive uh, results. Um, this allowed us not only to find the most appropriate terms, definitions, uh, let's say, uh, units for uh, the curriculum development that we plan to do in the future, but also to validate our methodology and our uh, results. <clears throat> All this uh, process was uh, recorded to a new publication called the Transnational Information Literacy Ecosystem Mapping, the Tillen book. Uh, the Tillen book, it's around 200 pages and it consists with all this data and currently is available through the Zenodo repository. And of course, it will be available through the website and everybody can access all this information. Uh, that was the outcomes of intellectual output one. And these outcomes were the source, the input, for the rest of the DLXL outcomes, two, three, and four, which my colleague will present after uh, in a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Fadini and Dimitri. Um, next, our colleague, subject librarian at the Cyprus University of Technology Library, Ms. Sarazmia Gola, will present information literacy training package. Sarazmia.
Δεν Μα πρέπει να αλλάξουμε τι παρουσιάσει. Πώ θα ανακαλύψουμε, Καλημέρα, ακούγομαι. Ναι, δεν μπορώ. Δεν μπορώ στο χέρι. Πόσο τραγουδίστρια. Μα ακούτε, ακούγομαι. Όχι, όχι, αλήθεια. Δεν μπορώ στο χέρι. Είναι πολλά τραγουδίστρια. Πάολα. <laughs> Αλήθεια να το κρατώ έτσι. <laughs> Καλημέρα. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the sound is it okay to the back? Yes? yes. Perfect. All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my presentation concerns the information literacy package and specifically its content and structure. Uh, I will first present to you the basic literacy on which the creation of this package was based, namely information literacy, and then all the literacies developed in the project. But first, let me introduce you to the research team from the Cyprus University of Technology Library who worked on this project for over two years. They are members from the subject librarian's office. They act as a liaison between the library and the department, and among others, They offer educational seminars to the academic community, as well as information literacy programs. My fellow colleagues, Athena Eva Goru, Potini Nikolaidou, and Maria Kiprianou. The CAD research team has contributed to all intellectual output. They were the leaders in intellectual output too. In particular, they designed the generic information literacy curriculum template based on the established IL models. They also design and develop the curricula of information literacy, digital literacy, mobile literacy that will be presented in the next slides. The final outcome of Intellectual Output 2 was to deliver a complete six information literacy learning modules curriculum development in the form of a text compiled by each partner's specific contribution. Each partner, including the leading partner, was in charge of the design and creation of their learning modules. These were then used for the creation of online open access asynchronous literacy course curricula in the virtual learning environment. The generic information literacy prototype was a pilot course that was used by the partners to design their own literacy curricula. The generic information literacy module was the main content source for the horizontal accomplishment of educability projects aim. The information literacy training package addresses educators and librarians who are interested in continuing their professional development in the wider and specific fields of information literacy. The main purpose of developing this package was to strengthen and support the trainers and multiply their information skills. More specific, The trainees will be able to multiply IL skills both at the horizontal level and at the vertical level, depending on the field that they will choose each time. Educators and librarians will gain also knowledge and skills that will make them confident to plan their own activities and intervention on various topics. Finally, train them on how to design a short, scalable intervention for the communities they serve. The package contains the six main literacies, including information literacy. These are critical literacy curriculum, data literacy, 
digital literacy, media and information literacy, mobile literacy, and sustainable literacy curriculum. All the courses are available via the virtual learning environment and learners are encouraged to read all the content and learn all their own pace, taking their time to fully grasp new concepts and become familiar with literacies. To accommodate differing learning styles and encourage learning by doing, a set of interactive activities such as quizzes, crosswords, interactive videos, interactive books, interactive presentations, flashcards, drag and drop exercises, and others were used. Learners can repeat each activity or module as many times as they wish. And finally, they can receive comprehensive feedback with the correct answers for each activity. The intellectual output too led to the content of six learning courses based on the results of information literacy mapping report and the Delphi study to determine and finalize the key areas of the curriculum developed. Each curriculum has specific learning objectives and outcomes that have been evaluated by a pool of experts. The curriculum design takes into consideration various learning theories and teaching approaches, which derive from the theories in order to offer end users a variety of quality educational approaches for the development of the different literacy skills. Educators and librarians may familiarize themselves with variety of topics through scientific articles website, videos, and others. A set of reflecting guidance activities as well as complementary material to help them design their own activities, interventions, and lesson plans concerning IL and related, related literacies. Over the years, a variety of frameworks, models, and literacies have been developed to guide educators and librarians in their efforts to build information skills and capabilities in their learners. Educators need to expand their capabilities in order to recognize the increasingly complex knowledge and skills young people need to function productively, safely, and ethically in diverse and increasingly digital mediated environments. This highlights the importance in relation to their future roles, educating young people to bridge their gaps in information literacy, develop critical thinking, and build the capacity to leverage advantage from digital resources and information in safe, secure, and sustainable ways. Terms such as digital literacy, mobile literacy, media literacy, critical literacy, and recently data literacy have all been associated with the effective use of information in teaching and learning environments and have been promoted as components under the umbrella of information literacy. Learners must master skills in these new literacies to manipulate information when they turn to the internet to help them make decisions about everyday life issues such as healthcare, political issues, and cultural mores. Using information, meaning, seeking, evaluating, and applying information to answer questions and solve problems in everyday life is at the heart of information literacy and new literacies. Concluding, this project aims to expand the concept of information literacy by incorporating new literacies and trends in educational environments. Information literacy is essential for achieving goals in the workplace, education, citizenship, health, and everyday life. The learners will acquire and upgrade information literacy and academic skills, addressing the process of searching, managing, evaluating, and using the information critically and ethically. Also, they will develop skills and competences in occupational and personal life. This course has been developed by the Cyprus University of Technology Research Team and is based on ACRA information literacy standards for higher education. It contains five modules, need for information, locate, evaluate, synthesize and present information, and ethically use and communicate. Completing the course Critical Information Literacy the users will learn how to work with patrons and communities 
to go investigate the political, social, and economic dimensions of information, including its creation, access, and use. Moreover, they will be involved in a better understanding of systems of oppression, while also identifying opportunities to act upon learners. This course has been developed by, this, by the University Carlos of Madrid, and the main objectives of the course are apply critical approaches to information, misinformation, fake news, and algorithm bias, ethical and socially responsible behavior, promotion of equity, cultural diversity, and finally, information social justice. The data literacy course providers provides learners with a collection of data literacy resources and activities to help them become data literate and bridge the gap in the necessary expertise of library and educator professional in this context. Moreover, enrich them with skills on how to access, interpret, critically assess, manage, handle, and ethically use data, also engage in society through and about data. This course has been developed by the University Carlos of Madrid, and the main objectives are introduction to literacy, understand data literacy, reading, interpreting, obtaining, and managing data, connecting the literacy to multi-literacies. After completing the digital literacy, the learners will develop skills and abilities using digital tools appropriately to loc locate, evaluate, analyze, synthesize, and construct new knowledge. They learn also how to communicate and interact with others in a creative and transformative way. This course has been developed by the, by the Cyprus University of Technology Research Team, and the main objectives are technical operational abilities and basic ICT skills in a digital environment, evaluate information, create and edit content in different formats, communicate and ethically interact with others, engage, collaborate, and share information through technologies, understand online risk, privacy issues, threats, and cyberbullying, and finally, libraries as pioneering agents of digital literacy skills. In the course of media and information literacy, the learners will understand the factions of media and other information providers to critically evaluate their content and to make informed decisions as users and producers of information and media content. They will also become able to use diverse media, information sources, and channels in private, professional, and public lives. The course has been developed by the University of West Attica, and the main objectives are introduction to media and information literacy, understanding mainstream media as information providers, libraries as pioneering agents of information and media skills, critical consumption of information and media content, ethical use, production of information and media content, and finally, understanding the free internet as information provider. Recently, the rapid growth of mobile technologies has led e-learning to a new era where mobile devices quick and easy access, provide quick and easy access to information on the move. The course of mobile literacy will help the learners to develop 21st century skills in order to survive in a complex and demanding society. They will benefit from information and mobile technologies aimed at learning independence. This course has been developed by the Cyprus University of Technology Research Team, and the main objectives are understand the unique characteristics of mobile technology, critical information skills and competencies through mobile devices, communicate, interact, and socially engage through mobile devices, understand the safety and privacy issues, incorporate mobile technologies in class, and last, universities, libraries, and academic librarians as pioneering agents of mobile literacy skills. Sustainability is a process of strategy of moving towards a sustainable future. This course will help the learning familiarize with the concept of sustainable development, 
also will become aware of inequality in access to the to and therefore equal education, motivate and empower others to demand and use educational opportunities. And finally, they will recognize the value of education and identify learning needs for personal development. The course has been developed by the University of Novi Sad, and the main objectives are introduction to the literacy, sustainable development literacy as a tool for critical thinking, teaching the connection between environment, society, and economy, ethical approach to complex problems, filling the camp between social groups and reducing inequalities, and last, applying the interdisciplinary approach to SDL teaching and learning in specific age groups. And as our beloved Filipos Tsimbogulu said, libraries are moving towards cooperative globalization where each one offers its own locality in terms of the global society. A library should act locally, but think and influence globally. Thank you. I now call our representatives from the University Carlos III of Madrid, Spain, Mrs. Sara Martinez Cardama, Professor at the Library and Information Science Department, and Mrs. Belen Mosquera Arancibia, Librarian in OpenCourseWare. They will give us an introduction to the actual virtual learning environment, the Educability Platform. Please. Can we close? And the presentation is. No, it's not. It's not the one. So it's the end of the presentation. Uh, thank you. It's a question of the mouse. I, I didn't share. Okay, okay. I, I thought it was sharing. How? Uh, boom. Share screen. Yes. Now this is the thing. And we prefer to share all the screen yes, because, because we are going to move. It's not possible. It's all yes, right. okay. All right. Um share screen. Share screen. Okay. Because we're going to move to the Moodle. Move to the... Oh, you have external okay, okay. Yes. Yeah, external that's fine. Mm -hmm. that's fine. Sure. Okay. Um yeah, thank you. The oh. VLE is open here. It's open here. Okay. Uh, Calimera, hello everyone. Um yeah, which is one is, is working? Is one. Yeah. Probably is better. Okay, now, Calimera, everyone. Buenos dias. Um, good morning. Um, we are going to introduce the IO3 and the virtual learning environment. Uh, we are spoke on behalf of University Carlos III of Madrid. Uh, we are Belen Mosquera and Sara Martinez. And this is our, was our task um, uh, and our mission in, in the project. Okay, so this is a presentation of educability, the holistic and user driving approach for developing this open access tool. Now we are going to introduce the, the tool itself, the product itself, the VLE. Uh, these are the uh, all the literacies, all the literacies um, we we include. As Erasmia spoke to uh, to us, uh, if we see this diagram, we work directly in the state C, C in working in this information literacy training package and the uh, web portal itself, okay? Uh, to implement this portal, we 
work all together to co in cooperation with all the partners. So I want to thank all the, all the people here in, in, from the different countries for the inputs and insights um, to, to create the product. Um, we, uh, the process was uh, scalable and we, we faced several pilot use uh, with several users, uh, educators and librarians with different multiplier events to become here to the presentation of the final product. Um, this is our relation of the UC3M with Educability. Uh, we are a trans transdisciplinary team um, with a strong scientific and technological background. We were divided in two parts, the scientific team and the technological team. The scientific team, uh, we have three people. The team leader is Miguel Angel Marzal, um, I'm Sara Martinez and Pablo Parra, which is a, a teach, teaching professor from the Universidad Complutense. And the technological team represented by Belen Mosquera uh, from the open courseware select section of the, of the library, Jose Carlos Ortega, the, the responsible of the web design, and Rosa Sanchez from the U3M digital, digital. U3M Digital is like a trans, transdisciplinary uh, unit that is uh, focusing in this kind of projects. And the computing service with Clara Benedet and Esther, um, Esther Morau. Okay, this is where our function, the deployment and configuring and maintenance of a model um, to include a content, the, tra the training and support for content creators. Um, we, Belen is going to explain all the guide uh, that we were published, we were being published to guide in, in terms of the creation of the content and the integration in, in a unique uh, web environment. Uh, we need to talk a little bit about the transition between the literacies that the RASMIA uh, include. We All of the partners include our ideas, our uh, learning objectives, our um, proposal of, of task in a plain document. And this, we need to include it in the, in the Moodle, in interactive platform. This was really a hard work because, uh, you know, we were to, to, to take some pedagogical and technical decisions because sometimes we, we thought about uh, playing tech. We are, we, are, we are thinking in some kind of, of activities and then we need to include it in the H5P, for example, uh, design, which is going to explain the now. So we, uh, this part of the project includes this, this period of talking, of conversation of how can we, uh, yeah, change to the, from this text to the interactive platform, okay? And this more or less is the, the look uh, of our VLE. It's a structure in models. And every literacy has uh, the authors, the responsibilities, the institution, and the, uh, the time, the estimated time to do it, and the content from each institution. We have a unique uh, concept, contact for all the institutions. And now Belen is going to start in the, in the VLE. Calimera. Good morning. Uh, I am Belen, I am a librarian and a member of the technical team of this project. I will show you the virtual learning environment as a point of view uh, of a technical, not as a scientific. Well, um, the technical members of the project uh, had uh, two goals. Uh, first of, uh, of this goal was, was to deliver a um, training package and uh, the second goal uh, to develop a web portal to access uh, to the different modules and literacies. Uh, first of all, uh, we have to uh, select the platform, the learning platform, and we Select a uh, Moodle. Why? Uh, for several re reasons. Uh, as Moodle is uh, one of the most uh, popular uh, open source learning management system. Uh, was created uh, for courses cre creation. Uh, we, the technical team, uh, has support and experience in Moodle, uh, IT service, and uh, Libra staff. Uh, Moodle is uh, free software, uh, multi-language, multi-device, 
Eh, anyone can download eh, the course, all, all the, the, the course contents. Eh, has the possibility of eh, to have a secure secure server and a very interesting thing eh, eh, we can add eh, dynamic content content with H5P technology. Eh, also, eh, there are um, an extensive documentation about model that support us in this process. Well, the second step was the configuration of a model. Uh, we install, is, uh, install a model for educability in on a UC3 aim server and configured it. Uh, the model, uh, this model is uh, the version is the version 3.10. We choose the then adaptable of Moodle, and know that uh, these uh, modules are in uh, open access. That means that there are no um, user users enrollment, uh, no marks. Uh, uh, also, and anyone can download and reuse the content under this licensee, uh, Creative Commons licensee. Well, um, the scientific um, team uh, have to um, upload the content of the courses. Uh, they, they are the content creators. To support them, uh, we um, create uh, the, course, the course templates and um, we had a, a two editing training, one online and uh, the second one face to face um, in Madrid. On June, I, I remember. Uh, we wrote also um, a manual for publishers to support them. And we, as a technician, uh, give advice and technical support of the rest of the members of the project. Well, uh, our second goal uh, was um, to create a web portal. Uh, we decided finally uh, to use the homepage of the learning platform as a web portal uh, to access to the whole uh, modules. Why? Uh, because we want to avoid duplication. Uh, Educability Project has a web, pro a web page. Uh, you have, uh, you can see that. And we have a second platform, learning platform. For this reason, uh, to avoid duplication, uh, we choose um, the homepage of Moodle as a web uh, portal. Well, this is um, the homepage. I will show you uh, when I finish my presentation uh, uh, in live. But this is uh, the homepage with the different learning modules. All the modules have an in a representative image. And this is the structure of the learning uh, modules. Uh, all the modules have, have the same structure. On the, left, uh, on the left, you have the content index to move to the different part of the, of the module. And in the central part, um, area in the central area, you have uh, the title of the literacy, the authors, uh, university, and an estimated time to um, to this module, um, and two icon to share the um, this content. Well, all the modules have uh, interactive exercise. I don't I don't know. If you know the H5P technology or not, uh, H5P is an external tool, tool but uh, it is integrated in, in Moodle and allow uh, to create interactive content, not only exercise, also presentation. Um, like you can um, create quizzes, presentation, uh, videos with a uh, question in the in the video another tip of read content. The um, 
uh, H5P, uh, you can create the exercise uh, within Moodle or uh, through the uh, platform uh, H5P.org. It's free uh, with, re with registration. You have um, there a uh, different kind of H5P exercise, like crossword, uh, flash card uh, game, drag the walls, and true uh, or false. And this is my last uh, slide. Um, it's about content reuse. Uh, all the modules um, can be don download uh, entirely. But also you can download the H5P exercise uh, individual, individually. Um, you can uh, use this uh, each exercise, uh, have these uh, icons to reuse or embed the content. And if you want to reuse our content, uh, you have a, a brief guide in the platform uh, to support you in this um, in this case. And I will try to show you in, in live. This is um, the information literacy, literacy training package, the homepage. Uh, we explain there uh, who is the program for and what is in the program. You have here the different uh, literacies. And here uh, you have the document, the bread guide, uh, how to explore uh, a course and uh, how to use, how to use is for the content editors to, um, um, to edit the content. Uh, we have uh, also the icon to the um, Creative Commons licensing and uh, three icons to media social of the educability project. And I go to one of the literacies, for example, this. As I said before, uh, all, all the literacies have the same structure. You can go to the different modules. And um, the module has uh, this uh, inform uh, a first page with information and activity page with H5P activities. For example, in this case, there are uh, videos that the user can to watch them. And after that, they have to answer a different uh, question. Um, for example, this, I, I don't read the question. I can check if uh, it's good my answer or not. Uh, I can write it again or so a uh, solution. And all modules have uh, also complementary material. And an important thing is in the content index, in the end, uh, there is a link to download the, the course. And uh, you uh, had, will have all the files of the course and you can reuse it. And this is my presentation. And now, Sara, uh, go to uh, close uh, our presentation. Thank you, Ellen. Mm, okay, after showing the VLE, just a quick note regarding the impact of the project and the impact of the content reuse proposal. Um, we think all the, all the team members think that this uh, is very beneficial uh, because can act as an inspirational tool for other professionals, for other librarians, for other professors that import this course and create their own activities. However, it's a tool for train of trainers also. Um, you can use this, this kind of courses in other specific um, learning approaches. 
Uh, this is a tool also that can be uh, continue with cooperation of other uh, networks and, and specialists and that uh, promote synergic development with other stakeholders. I'm thinking in uh, secondary education, for example, or on other kind of stakeholders. In the perspective of, from the perspective of Spain, here you have a screenshot about our consortium uh, from university libraries. We think um, they have a group, a work group about digital competence that, and they provide a lot of material. And maybe we think that educability can contribute to all the universities, uh, to all the, the uh, libraries of the university in Spain, probably with a translation or something, but uh, we think that is a, a very interesting uh, tool and thank you, thank you all. Finally, I would like to welcome Mrs. Mirjana Berkovi, head of the University of Novi Sad, Central Library in Serbia, who will reveal why do we need a transnational memorandum of the cooperation, sustainability, and transferability. Thank you. Thank you. So stop sharing. I didn't know. Yeah, you're right. And now let's Eunice. Let's close all these. Next time. Eunice, the last one. No, I don't know. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, okay. So it's the presentation we want to share. And I can uh, move with this. Uh, oh, with this or okay. with the pointer? This but, is okay. 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 I just have to click on that. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, Kalimera, as they say here in Greece and in Cyprus. Uh, I'm very glad to be here today with all of you. My name is Mirena Barkovic. I will uh, present our work on transnational memorandum. This is our uh, eighth uh, activity report of the Uni University of Nysad project team. And uh, I will uh, show you who we are in the end, but uh, right now I would like to show you what we will talk about. First, I will have several slides on uh, about uh, what uh, transnational project is. Um, then I will talk about memorandum and about project sustainability. In the end, we will make some conclusions. What does uh, the abbreviation uh, TMCSD stand for? It's Transnational Memorandum of Cooperation, Sustainability and Transferability. There are so many uh, abbreviations right now uh, on the internet and also in our SMSs, in our internet uh, usage that we sometimes do not know what we are talking about and what does the other person refer to. So, uh, Transnational Memorandum of Cooperation, Sustainability and Transferability is a document that will be signed. And uh, first of all, uh, the word memorandum can be a little bit uh, tricky because it is uh, less uh, than uh, agreement and more than a handshake, as they say. And it is a kind of document that uh, regul it regulates our um, uh, relations between project partners, but also with all of you. This is the first page of our transnational memorandum, which will be signed later. How was the project carried out? We know that it was transnationally carried out co cooperatively and with the respect of the domestic strategies. It made some um, uh, very good outcomes because uh, we have this um, different teams from different countries 
And we worked cooperatively uh, during our uh, live meetings, but also uh, through many meetings online and uh, with respect of others. Uh, sorry, I wanted to show you one of the international educability project teams work on the transnational memorandum. Those are uh, teams from Greece, Cyprus, uh, Novi Sad, and uh, Spain, but um, the uh, cooperation was very important, as you can see, because of the stronger feasibility of our project, also wider co consolidation between the teams, long-term impact of our project, uh, sustainability and transferability of the intellectual outputs. The document uh, was created by the University of Novi Sad Educability Project Team. This is the photograph of our university in Serbia. A transnational memorandum will be signed by the representatives of all the Educability Project Teams on the last day of the project, as it is planned, and I hope it will happen. What is uh, this memorandum talking about? First of all, the purpose of signing the uh, MCST is to uh, protect the copyright laws and the author's rights in two directions. The first one is copyrights of the materials used by the audiobility authors, and uh, the other direction is copyright of materials created by the uh, audiobility authors. So we have used some uh, uh, materials, uh, videos, photographs, and uh, other texts and uh, articles from other um, authors, and we had to respect their uh, author's rights. But also we created some materials which can be in the future used by others. And we also want to protect our own rights uh, like authors. Uh, materials produced by the community authors, as you have already heard, are TILM ebook, also SIL uh, MDC ebook, and information literacy training patch, package in the virtual uh, learning uh, environment. Those are all uh, open access materials. That is the reason why we wanted to make everything clear regarding our copyright laws. List of the copyrights used in the intellectual outputs. Uh, the list is as follows. Uh, as you can see, there are listed all the uh, Creative Commons licenses, also public domain and uh, uh, IGO for uh, video recordings. Respect of copyrights by the future end users is also required. End users are free to share, to copy, and to redistribute materials and uh, everything uh, in any medium or format, as long as they give the proper attribution to the author or the authors, to use materials uh, for non-commercial uh, commercial purposes and to distribute modifications of the material accordingly. It means if we have uh, uh, proposed one uh, copyright license, the material which is produced uh, by re reusing our material needs to uh, redistribute uh, the same uh, license. Is the project sustainable or not? Intellectual outputs will be sustainable if project parts, parties and end users for example, translate the content of the VLE in their local language and publish it. Also, if project parties and other users organize trainings, workshops, lectures, and other similar activities with the lo local library and teachers associations, for example, or library associations as well. And if they promote intellectual outputs to organizations, implementing information literacy and lifelong learning programs. Also, uh, they can incorporate parts of the virtual learning environment content to undergraduate programs, et cetera, et cetera. It is up to you how will you use our material. We recommend that the project parties and end users publish articles dealing with the intellectual outputs of the project in the scientific publications. 
and also present the project intellectual outcomes on different local, regional, and transnational uh, conferences, meetings, roundtables, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We have several conclusions. The first one. The memorandum uh, is a document important for the sustainability of the intellectual outputs of the educability project. The second one is that without the transnational memorandum, the future usage of the materials and intellectual outputs created by the ed educability project teams would have been obscured and not probable. And the third one is the memorandum enables the end users to be completely informed about the copyright issues connected with a wide range of the materials used and created by the project teams. The educability project parties recommend maximum de dissemination and use of all created materials and all the intellectual outputs. We hope that you will use it. The University of Novi Sad Educability Project teams uh, had uh, six members. Four of them are PhDs and two are um, Magisters of Science. Those are their names and our email is educability at uh, UNSACRS. You can write to us and we will immediately answer. This is our team uh, working on the transnational memorandum as you can see us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, this is um it's time for all questions on all the presentations and an opportunity for discussion. Uh, since we are all here together from all parts of the world. So if anybody has questions, we can take it in turns. Online. I think everybody wants lunch, yes. <laughs> of course, please. Uh, we thank all the audience, the ones that we are physically here and the ones that are uh, by the web with us. And um, if we, I know we have some librarians here and I know that librarians has, have welcomed this uh, opportunity and this uh, project. But uh, what we also would like is to cooperate with educators. Uh, if uh, this material is not in your language, are you willing to use it and translate it on your own? Are, are you willing to email us and let us help you? Uh, did anybody have the, the chance to uh, navigate the platform? I guess not. Uh, and we are here to help you. Uh, you will see contact uh, details in each module. And we are here um, to form a network. The main goal is not just to download some uh, suggested uh, activities that of course have been developed after extensive literature review and uh, a lot of work, collaborative work from all partners. But the main goal is really to disseminate, to understand each other, librarians and educators, and work co cooperatively, to see, to find, find the common ground. And if this platform is the opportunity to find the common ground, that would make uh, us very happy. And uh, Anna talked before about a happy school. Uh, in the equation of your presentation, I think we missed a library uh, libraries are maker spaces. They can welcome uh, any type of uh, um, initiative and they can offer uh, the technical support as well. But mainly people, librarians, uh, are the ones uh, who uh, welcome uh, teachers and students to cooperate. 
and uh, learn by doing. Thank you. If you have nothing else to say or ask. Anybody else? Anna. Um, just a question to everybody and a big thank you to all the partners. Okay, a big uh, thank you to everybody and to the partners and, and for uh, this material, which is very important for, for us at this moment. I, I'm wondering first, uh, is it possible to, or, or do you have a provision in your partnership to um, translate the material yourselves. I, I see that, uh, I understand that you, you invited us to, uh, to do that on our own, but is there a provision for you to do that? Or are you thinking in collaborating with other institutions who could um, translate their material? That is the uh, first question. And then a second question maybe for our uh, uh, professors in the universities to address uh, their umbrella of uh, information or literacy. Sometimes we see that uh, like a, a different umbrella. You get the media literacy to be uh, at the top of the umbrella and then the rest of their literacy is uh, beneath the umbrella. So I'm wondering if it's, this is something you discussed um, during research and whether you have any input on that. So it's two different uh, questions. Thank you. Thank you, Anna, for your question, for your two questions. I'm answering on behalf of all partners. Okay. Uh, as far as the first question is concerned, yes, we are planning to translate uh, some of the literacies in Greek. Uh, eventually, because the project uh, finished, the funding has finished. Of course, our enthusiasm has not finished yet. Uh, also, uh, the Spanish team and the Serbian team will start translating their own literacies. And maybe we, uh, as a network, we can exchange uh, uh, resources, human resources, and maybe we can cooperate with uh, anyone, any institution that wishes to help us in the translation. Uh, and uh, as far as the second question is concerned, um, first of all, we are librarians, so we are information literacy, let's say, um, uh, mentality, our mentality is uh, around information literacy. Uh, I don't know if it's a real scientific pattern, I think it is, but uh, throughout the uh, extensive uh, literature review that we made, we always found that, for instance, uh, digital literacy has a lot of, of co in common with, uh, media, with um, information literacy. Media information literacy has a lot of, of common again with information literacy. What I mean is that information literacy is the older one and has established uh, some uh, core models uh, that uh, offer uh, the teacher and the librarian the opportunity to implement them and to develop uh, uh, the adequate uh, skills for uh, their student pupils, etc. So um, we tried to, to, to find the overlaps and we found that each literacy uh, has to do with uh, something else, uh, deepens in, in another field, let's say, but the core, uh, uh, let's say, uh, skills are to uh, Ask yourself if you have a need for information. Sometimes we need, we think that we know what we want to search for, but we have not uh, asked ourselves the right questions first. Then to, to know how to search for an information in different environments, it's, it's different how to search for an information in an archive, in an on online library catalog, on the internet, which it's chaos. It's, you have to know different techniques and different vocabulary. Uh, the third is when you retrieve information, how do you manage this information? Or when you uh, 
uh, found a very interesting book. How uh, do you have physical access to it? Do you have the money to borrow all these books that you really want all these learning objects and materials as, as a teacher? Uh, have you ever thought that being a member of a library is like being a member of a whole world because libraries have the interlibrary loan uh, services? And um, it's like that you as a teacher own millions of books. Uh, and then it's how you evaluate the information. Uh, there, are, there, there is a list of criteria to evaluate information, but the two most important are, is relevancy. How relevant is the information to your question, to the problem you have? And of course, credibility. Credibility is a huge thing. We have developed, and um, Irene Andriopoulou, Irene Andriopoulou said us before about fake news, you said about fake news. Uh, we have developed a whole uh, deal of uh, uh, criteria and uh, activities and programs on how to uh, evaluate not only um, news information and social media information, but also scientific information as well. There are pieces of information that seem to be scientific and they are not. And then after doing this, uh, how do you uh, take pieces of knowledge, how incorporate this knowledge to your own base of knowledge in order to collaborate and with other students, with other colleagues and create new, new knowledge and how to disseminate this knowledge in a productive way and in an ethical way, which means that you, um, uh, use uh, creative common licenses or you uh, refer to uh, the first creator of the content you took elements from, etc. These are the core, let's say, skills that information literacy proposes. So all the other literacies propose uh, these skills as well. Oh, that was a long answer, sorry. <laughs> Any more questions? Okay. No, don't see. Okay. So we will be um, taking a break for lunch. <laughs> upstairs, uh, restaurant Nefeli, and we will uh, regroup in an hour. So even if we're going a bit earlier, I presume 2.30 or two, between two and 2.30, okay. <laughs>